call the finance <coughs> committee meeting to order. It's 707 on March 19th. Happy late St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> everyone. And the first thing on our agenda is to talk with the council. Oh, the first thing on my agenda is to say thank you to Howard D'Amico, our vice chair, for doing a wonderful job last week. I'm almost done watching the yeah. very <laughs> exciting but long meeting, Howard. We handled it well. Yeoman's work. Yeah. Yeoman's. Well, She's well, almost ready to Good yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. So the first uh, lady on our agenda is the council on aging. This is Patricia Russo. She's the chairman. I'd like our committee to introduce ourselves to her, if you wouldn't mind Sorry, starting with you. Carol Gogolinski, we've met before. Yes, yep. Heather Morin. Hey, Heather. Lynn Mazzoli. Hey, Lynn. And Pam Holmes. Howard D'Amico. Nice to see you all. Welcome. So, what's on your project list or upcoming budgetary request? I don't know. I don't have anything too too exciting. Just um, basically the payroll and then um, vacation coverage for a per diem, and um, some carpet cleaning that needs to be done a couple times a year. And um, I did put in some um, conference money, um, but uh, this year we got our grant not until like November or December. It was really late this year, hmm. and the conference was in October. Yeah, so I didn't really want to spend money that I didn't have yet because. That's, just, lunch that's frowned upon. <laughs> yep. And um, so I had the, I did not spend that, but um, I would reallocate it somewhere else for sure. Because okay. um, of course the grant I'm using now, and this is all for next year. Um, and just the phone, the postage, um, my printing and mailing of my newsletter is uh, covered under the grant. Mm -hmm. And then other services would be our yoga, tai chi, and Zumba classes. That's covered under the grant also. Uh, I have office supplies, very small amount, and then I have um, segregated different office supplies because the labels that do the newsletter and some of the paper for the stuffing is done under the grant. So anything that's done on the newsletter that's office supplies is under that. And um, some mileage for home visits or nursing home visits or some in-state travel. And uh, dues and memberships, I know the MCOA is going to be going up next year. They're kind of forewarning us there. Because we got $12 uh, per senior this year, they're going to increase theirs a little bit because they haven't increased it in forever in a day. And they do a lot of things for the mm -hmm. for the senior services. So your grant money total then you receive is 12972 mm -hmm. Correct. And that's from the state? It is, and it's based on the um, 2010 <coughs> census when we had 1,081 seniors. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have 1,881. So what wow. they're doing mm -hmm. is, the yeah, are, are people moving in, or everybody just getting old? No, there is. Yeah. We've had quite a few people, <laughs> quite a few people moving in. Some of the um, some of the younger seniors that maybe lived out of state that have families that have settled here, and their grandparents are coming here when they retire. Mm -hmm. So 1,881 is uh, 19, the 2018. And um, we expect probably a good, I think I did the population, 20% over the next five years mm -hmm. of an increase. So it's happening. You know, and we are seeing a lot of new... busting at the seams down there, though. Faces. We are busting at the seams. The, the space allotment is not it's expandable. No. No, because it's in the basement. And I mean, yeah. we work with it. We have mm -hmm. different things running in different, different rooms types. all day long. Mm -hmm. And um, when we have bigger programs like our parties and such, we can kind of gauge whether we can have a meal or if we're just going to have to do seating. Right. Yeah. Buffet or something. Yes. Or, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, yep. we're out of space more like storage-wise for like books and right. exercise stuff and oh, yeah. then, then we are out of anything, yeah. the art supplies and yeah. all of that. So all our closets are pretty full, but um, other than that, we, we do the best we can with our space. Are you open? How many days a week? We're open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 2 because of the school. Mm -hmm. Trying to get out of that mm -hmm. parking lot would be, you know, a nightmare. And then on Fridays, I'm always there on Fridays, so um, we do have an exercise class that meets in the morning on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday nights, um, we have a painting class. And on um, Tuesdays, um, they will start up doing Sunshine Club events. Now the spring's come. They do bingo. What's Sunshine Club? The Sunshine Club is a group, a little nonprofit group that has uh, formed to help out with things around the senior center. So they raise money and, you know, they'll, they're doing the mural, they're paying for that, some of that, and they'll help subsidize a lunch, 
Mm -hmm. They do other programs that we wouldn't have that, you know, they can rent out the Sokol and they can do a fun night mm -hmm. there. So they're a nice group. And they do bus trips. Mm -hmm. Yep, they do trips and um, they do like the October Fest. And mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're really good at uh, doing raising money and doing other things that we're not capable of doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it helps subsidize some of our mm -hmm. programs. Yep. In addition, Patrice also um, puts an application in for the uh, local cultural council, so she gets some of her funding for the mm -hmm. events that she has from the that, that as well. So it, she has the general fund, she has the COA grant, mm -hmm. she does utilize the Senior Work Off program, and she mm -hmm. used the odd uh, slaughter in addition to the sunshine. So yeah. what you yes, see so here is only a piece of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I guess I have always said I'd love to see the total well, that's why we put the grant on here. Well, that's one. Yeah. yeah. But there is a cultural council that provides for the some cultural entertainment council, and whatever. Yeah. We, uh, we received $1,000 this year from the okay. cultural okay. council. Cool. Okay. So that was amazing because we're very known for our entertainment. We pick really good entertainers. It's not the same ones that go, or not the same ones over and over again. And um, because of that, we were able to have really good quality good. entertainment and that the seniors really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So that, that is not guaranteed it's because not. It's, it's this competitive process. Sure. So mm -hmm. it depends on who's submitting yeah. to them. Right. One well. year I could so get five dollars. Next year I could get seven hundred. I get three hundred. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy yeah. for Bernie to get something for anything. Yeah. 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 And the tax work off. Yeah, we have a we have a lot of seniors that are taking advantage of that which is nice. That's how our painting classes are done. Okay. Um, that's how our gardening is done at the senior center. Okay. Um, some of the cleaning that was done over the winter was tax work off okay. um, when we were missing our, our janitor for a, a little bit of time. So Good. Um, we've had a lot of interest in the tax work off this year. So just working with the senior center as, as, a, as a whole, as an entity, mm -hmm. and just supporting it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been very Things nice. that really need to be done. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's a win-win. It's a yeah. win for the seniors. And yeah. It's How many question. seniors would you say actually come down to the center? On a daily basis? Anywhere from 40 to 60 to 70, depending on what we have going on mm -hmm. during the day. If we have a big program, so we have 50 people at lunch, and then I've had 30 people at exercise. So it kind of rotates. I know that um, we do about 5,000 to 5,500 seniors every year in and out of the building. Mm -hmm. Maybe. One senior came in a hundred times, mm -hmm. but yeah. that's how yep. we have to count it. Uh, we had 166 new seniors join our senior center this year, so we're probably up in the average of three or four hundred new, mm -hmm. you know, new faces at some yeah. point. Yeah, plus, plus there's no parking over there. No, so last week. Um, Parking in the post office parking lot is frowned upon. Mm -hmm. So last week we were in the middle of the show, and of course we're busy down there, so I'm not thinking. So my seniors know not to park anywhere. Um, but the entertainment didn't realize, uh -huh. and then the parking lot uh -huh. was full when some seniors got there, and of course we only have two handicap spots, mm -hmm. so they parked where the post office, ooh, ooh. you know, parks, and it, you know, if there's a funeral going on at the church, or a yeah. social going on over there during the day, we're completely out of luck. Mm. So um, somebody came in and they complained, and they said, you know, you seen your son, and I said, well, we, he said, you have the whole back parking lot. I'm like, the whole back park, there's 12 parking spaces up there. <laughs> I have 50 people eating lunch yeah, right now. Right. Yeah. So um, anyway, we have the, the post office is really good about mm -hmm. understanding, you know. And um, it was just one patron that came in and complained, you know. So we went out, we, you know, we had people move their cars, but the parking is, is an issue. And we do try to encourage people to mm -hmm. commute, you know, mm -hmm. or carpool together, right. you know, if they're coming in. Some people do come on the bus. Um, if our senior enrichment group comes, they actually are on a bus, so that takes up a spot. And mm -hmm. then sometimes the elder <coughs> bus is waiting, so that takes up a spot. So it, it's a challenge all yeah. around. But yeah. we're uh, we're happy to still be open. Yeah. And uh, you know we're utilizing the. Yeah. I was only in there one time, <coughs> and it looked busy, but it was only. Oh, yeah. A few years ago. Well, so you must come. I will have to come. We're having a, an art show on May fifteenth to display our. Tell oh. them about the. Tell them about the uh, murals that you've got. So we had, um, <coughs> because we're in the basement, we've tried to make it homey. So one of our ladies made some curtains, and BBT came out a couple of years ago and painted the walls to make it kind of warm. And um, we had asked the painting group if they could maybe paint some flowers or something coming down the ramp. Well, one of the seniors um, had somebody at their house that had done some work for them and um, generously donated for the first wall to be done. And has it walking down Main Street. So when you walk in, it has a welcome sign, and it shows the church, and then it shows the post office, oh, cool. and then it shows, um, goes into the Jenks store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and then it goes into the that waterfall through town. It's amazing. So um, the Sunshine Club has donated the next wall, and that is going to be it's starting next Monday. Um, he comes in and works during the day so the seniors can watch. It's really nice. And he is going to be doing, um, continuing on with the waterfall, then doing the common, mm -hmm. and then the war memorials. Oh. And then there's another wall, that section that, um, <coughs> excuse me, it covers my office. The Girl Scouts are doing a can drive, so anybody is encouraged to drop off some cans or bottles. And um, we had a donation account um, that we had set up when my mother-in-law passed away. She, you know, the donations went to the senior center. And that is going to cover the rest of it, but it's absolutely breathtaking. What's the name of the man that's painting it? Um, I call him Airbrush Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's Dave from um, <clears throat> Airbrush Shack, and oh, okay. he comes in from Thompson. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he's so. just... He's a very nice guy, and the seniors enjoy really watching it come is, together. Uh, pretty amazing. It, it, it's like an optical illusion. So it's you're in a basement, but you're walking through Main Street oh, wow. when you come down the ramp. So bringing the outside in was really, really beautiful. Yeah. It, it really is quite beautiful, and we're really excited. It's about very uh, it's striking. Nine, and nine it's nine very to two are your hours. Yeah. Yeah. Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, and then on Friday. You can okay. Yeah, I'm there. I usually just keep the door locked, but I'm mm -hmm. there. Um, but yeah, we're going to have the art show on May 15th, and that will, be, that will be all of our art students will be displaying all of their reverse mm -hmm. glass painting and acrylic paintings and such. So we're just going to do an open house from 10 to 2 that day mm -hmm. and let everybody come in and see it because it should be finished. It is amazing. <coughs> I went last year, I think, to the art show. It's amazing work that they do. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Very talented. Very talented yeah. people down there. I put a lot of it on Facebook, but you mm -hmm. can't really capture it until you actually physically mm -hmm. see it. It's, yeah, it is. it's a lot nicer than that. So, we've had a really exciting year, and I, I love the fact that um, we are able to utilize our grant. Other senior centers, some of them charge. My mom is from the city, so they charge to do exercise programs, and mm -hmm. the lunches are priced a little bit higher, and um, thanks to the grants, we are able to provide all our exercise programs for free. Mm -hmm. And um, all of our entertainment is free, thanks to the Cultural Council. Why and don't you um, well, just kind of briefly tell us, tell the mem new members and us all, all uh, and uh, our watching TV audience, uh, some of the programs that you have down at the center. So we have um, <coughs> on Mondays. Doesn't we have to be all of them. Just, yeah. just some of them. We have painting generation. classes. We have Zumba classes. We have Tai Chi. We have yoga. Uh, we have bingo, of course. That's a staple. We have mm -hmm. knitting and crochet classes. You can come in. Everybody will teach you how to. Oh, so you don't have to be a senior? No, to, oh, well, okay. I don't cart anybody at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't ask what town they're from. Mm -hmm. um, you might be flying under the radar because you look really young. But no, we had somebody come in um, last week that's, you know, I said, I, I don't need to ask you how old you are. So she said, you don't? And I go, no, are you retired? And she goes, yeah. I go, good, good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're considered a senior by the state at 60. Uh -huh. But if you're 58 and you're retired or you're 55 and you're disabled, I'm... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're there for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, so we are going to be changing the name of the senior center. Um, we're changing our newsletter a little bit just to kind of make it a little bit more fun. <coughs> Instead of having something that looks like a town flyer coming in, one of our seniors has created a, a cover, and it will look like a nice little flowery book, mm -hmm. and you can see all of our stuff. And it's going to be the adult community center. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Revision of the name. Sure. Yeah, rebranding. So we, we you know, <coughs> ask the seniors what they would like. And, um, you know, I have people that are almost 100, and I have people that are 60 years old. So it was kind of like, what would you like it to be called? And even the 90 year old people were like, yeah, senior center just sounds so old. <laughs> and I think the stigmatism of that is, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, we've got a lot of younger people moving into mm -hmm. town, and they're like, oh, you have Zumba classes? <coughs> or, and these are high impact like mm -hmm. I couldn't do the zoom class mm -hmm. I could not so it's big enough in there to do all this stuff. so what we oh, do is we move all the tables to the side uh -huh. and then we have uh, an exercise room when yoga comes in yeah. gets pretty packed mm -hmm. the exercise room is uh, a little bit smaller than this and they um, they do chair yoga and they do Tai Chi mm -hmm. but um, they're able to like I said, we work with the space we're done. Mm -hmm. and if we have to move a class out to the main room mm -hmm. because there's not enough space in the small room then we do that too so can't wait to be 65. <laughs> you only have 60, to be 60, so far. 60, 60, 60. 60. Yeah, it's it's 58 if you're retired. <laughs> yes. 57 when I retire. Yeah. So. There you go. <laughs> there you know where you can come. Well, I'm going for 65 because you know. Because you are. Because I am. Patrice, <laughs> I, I see on here the uh, grant money is based on 2010 census. Correct. Is it not adjust again until 2020? 
I'm not sure when they're going to adjust it. I would hope that when the new census comes out, they will adjust it. But what they've been doing is they've been adjusting the dollar every year. So, like, say five years ago, I was getting eight dollars. Then it was nine dollars. Then they went up to ten dollars, and this year they went right to twelve. So they're trying to catch everybody up and um, be able to have the programs for the seniors because there's so many seniors now, you know. But by 2020, you might be at two thousand. Sure. People, oh, I, yeah. I right? will be. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so, so what they'll probably do is the lessen dollars. the amount. <laughs> they'll would probably they? lessen the dollar mm -hmm. amount. Would they? Because it's a statewide event, right? Mm -hmm. what, probably every other town is going to get. Yeah, it's it's every, it's, it's, school. yeah it's, everybody's getting that. It's based on mm -hmm. that census. So, I mean. Remember the pie. It's the pie. The size yeah. of the pie right. and where it gets divvied up. Right. And the theory is that all the towns arguably, at least. Okay, fair enough. Is that an age? Sure. But it, it is a you know a relatively generous amount. I mean, we used to get eight, now we get twelve. So now I can mm -hmm. have more exercise programs, sure. and I can yeah. okay. I mm -hmm. can have more things going on. A little the, more, and I can to. offer these things for free. I mean, mm -hmm. seniors, you know, don't have a lot of income. Fixed mm -hmm. income, yeah. and they're mm -hmm. on, right on a fixed income. So if they can come in and get healthy and get a meal and socialize, mm -hmm. then that's. Do you take donations of books and things like that? Of the seniors? We do. We yeah. rotate them in and out. Mm -hmm. Our, li our oh, library director is wonderful about um, mm -hmm. bringing stuff. Uh, we have a book club, so he supplies that. But they do have. A, we have a book exchange down there, and we have movies and magazines mm -hmm. um, and things like that. That mm -hmm. it's on a. If you yeah. bring it back, you bring sure. it back, and if you don't, and you pass mm -hmm. it on. That's okay mm -hmm. too. We have puzzles, mm -hmm. games, yeah. CDs, things to do. CDs for CDs, music. Yeah. Depending on the genre, yes. <laughs> well, I. Just my mother-in-law passed away four years ago, and oh. I was cleaning out some stuff oh, yeah. um, at the cottage down the Cape, and I said to my husband, you want to get rid of this stuff? He's like, yeah, I give it to somebody, and I was going to bring cool. it to Salvation yeah. Army. But, but CDs, I would definitely But it would die. probably be yeah, perfect, be because music. it's... It's like, you know, it's like, you know, sure. it's like Frank music. Sinatra yeah. and, you know, oh, like yeah. some of the Great. older big band stuff, so that might be perfect for yeah, you guys. Yeah, that would be perfect. We yeah. have music always going on in the yeah, background. I think I'll yeah. bring that down to you. Yeah, thank you so much. That would be wonderful. Yarn. We take yarn. We, we do take yarn, and our Lady and Crochet group makes things to sell on the Sunshine Club table. Oh. And they also make all of the um, christening blankets and the prayer shawls. And um, they make hats mm -hmm. that go into Boston and Worcester, and they make things to go up to the, the school for the kids mm -hmm. um, oh. during the winter. So they're quite busy, so yarn donations, yeah. Oh. Yes, we use that a lot, too. That's great. Yeah. We never knew. Yeah. So this was good, yeah. informative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Forward to this one. Sure. So I was curious. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. Thanks, Patrice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We continue with our goodwill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a mix? Oh, no, sorry. No, 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 we, we switched. We switched. We switched. Yeah. 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 Bye bye. We switched. Okay, so I'm here. Yeah. Right. So Got next it. on the agenda is our uh, librarian yeah. from the Sound of Fairfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll listen. We're just. Cheery. Okay. Uh, Justin I would have given up my CD. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we have seniors who use the library things. to check out a lot of CDs, and it's not all oldies and Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <laughs> most of the people listen to It is surprising. What is Presley's problem with seniors and seniors now? Well, it depends on the age it's of the senior. It's a clock tick, I think. Yeah. A lot mm. of the elder community and the age they pick up because your grandkids are listening to something and um, you're like oh mm -hmm. my son loves loves uh, uh 40s and 50s music loves it mm -hmm. so wonder where he got that mm -hmm. and i have seen years at the library who come in for their large print books and dr dre albums mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 it's just an eclectic collection mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. my mother's 80 and likes pink floyd and you know zeppelin <laughs> so <Ooh. laughs> So thanks for coming, Justin. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for having um, me. Should we introduce ourselves to Justin? Maybe. Justin. I was sitting right there. Yeah. Okay, so you know everyone's name. <laughs> <right. laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, we won't give you a test, but that's good. Um, so I'm Justin, the library director. I have two of my board members behind me. And you've um, been in town for how long, Justin? I've been the library director since June of 2015. I'm just kind of, 15, 15, we've got, 15, 15, 15. We, we do have some new members. One of them is on here. Yeah, almost four years. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Total having fun all the time. Another, another, what, let's see, four T5 or so years, and that like right. might be considered a town. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'd have to run that by a few people. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, just to start off, should I like guide you through the packet? Sure. Or? Tell us about yourself and the library and everything. Okay. So, um, I became a library director four years ago, um, but you know the format of the library has kind of stayed the same. The budget hasn't changed a lot. Um, it just continues to go year to year. Historically, um, what we have made, you know, the guiding factor in our budget request has been the municipal appropriation requirement. Um, so every year our budget has to increase by 20, by 2.5% of the average of the last three fiscal years. If we want to maintain our state certification and uh, Douglas residents remain eligible to be able to use other libraries to borrow, you know, statewide reciprocal privileges and we, that's how we get our grant money. Um, this year we would like to ask for a little more. Um, because that is what was projected in the five-year budget forecast um, last year uh, whenever we were coming up with our um, five-year budget forecasts before the override Matt asked us to project a, uh, a trajectory of maintaining our current level of services rather than a trajectory of making do with the bare minimum and continuing to cut services um, so that's what this budget um, reflects it's um, just to give an idea of the people watching, uh, in 2018 we checked out 21,613 books, 1,339 audiobooks, 8,151 movies, 1,327 magazines, and 98 museum passes. And that's just to Douglas residents. I'm not counting what we circulated throughout the rest of the network. Um, we provided 5,804 digital loans, 259 academic journal articles. Um, we had a program attendance of 2,882. Our wireless login, uh, our wireless network was logged in by 1,581 separate clients, and our public computers were used 1,374 times. Um, if you plug in all that data into a, uh, a library value calculator, uh, the American Library Association, it's a value of $615,000 that the library provided Douglas taxpayers directly. Um, on a budget of 227572 um, And this past year, um, our budget jumped 4.9%, uh, which that was from FY, um, seven, FY18 to FY19, and that actually led to an 11.8% increase in circulation. Um, <clears throat> so it affected our circulation quite dramatically, being able to meet the demand of you know materials because we always have a backlog of materials people place holds on books um, it's very rare that if someone can come to the library and find like the new bestseller they're after they have to get on a wait list for it um, and so any budgetary increase allows us to decrease that wait time and to provide more digital access um, for people to you know access materials and, and read literature in a more timely fashion um, so the town administrator's <coughs> budget model, and this, this is all, I'll, I'll go through this, but then there's amendments later. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, at the time I wrote this budget, which was back in January, um, the town administrator's uh, forecast for our budget was um, 233842 dollars. And so I wanted to just keep our budget at that rather than MAR, because our MAR is only 231793 which would actually be a cut from what we got this year. And so we didn't want to really do that. Um, so, you know, if, if we're looking at the minimum state requirement and if we're looking at what we need to actually, you know, meet the demand of services, um, because we always have that backlog of reserves, um, then we would need to ask for a lot more. Um, so meeting in the middle, staying on the forecast, uh, to, just kind of the goal here is to keep the trajectory going and not have any surprises. Um, for line items, we have salaries, that's um, me, the director. Um, for full-time wages, we have a children's librarian who works 33 hours a week and a circulation librarian who works 33 hours a week. We have two library assistants who work nine hours a week. Um, and we have pages. The pages are um, all high school students who work six hours a week. And um, get minimum wage um, and then on the operational side we have electricity and heating which even though they're kind of two different line items they're they're kind of the line between them is getting blurred 
because we just had, um, thanks to the Green Community's Compact grant money, um, the library was weatherized, um, the building envelope was retrofitted, so it's all airtight and cozy inside, and we got um, fancy new Mitsubishi hyperheat inverter mini split units. Um, so, like the Green Community's um, state grants pumped $108,000 into the building. We're expecting that to really lower our energy costs but now our heating is basically running on electricity um, so we don't have our, our oil budget I don't know what it's going to do I don't know what it's going to do to our electricity budget but it should at least evening things out um, non-energy utilities is the water bill repairs and maintenance are just minor fixes uh, throughout the library we try not to burden the town with repairs and maintenance as much as we can and fund maintenance of the building out of um, other accounts, uh, grants and donations, which I'll talk about later. Um, the professional and technical is our second biggest line item, and that is our CWMR's assessment. Um, and a lot of people look at it and say that's that's a big number, but it's actually an incredibly good deal. CWMR's manages our internet connections. They are our tech support for our. Um, all of our public access computers as well as our staff computers. <coughs> they provide the integrated library system, which is the database which keeps track of all of our patrons, all of our materials, and then connects, you know, accounts to materials so that whenever you can place a hold, you'll get, you know, the first available of, you know, 648 copies in the Commonwealth instead of having to, you know, find something and manually wait for it to come in the mail. Um, it funds, you know, it all, all of our circulation stuff. Um, the telephone, we have a emergency line for our alarm system, we have our uh, main line, and we have a fax line. Um, postage is just being able to send out um, lost notices whenever someone wants to keep something and we want it back. <laughs> Office supplies are, you know, you know, pen, paper, printer, ink, that kind of stuff. Custodial supplies are, um, you know, paper products for the restrooms. The, um, and whatnot. <coughs> Circulating materials is, is the biggest lion's share of the budget. In order to maintain um, our minimum service standards as a public library, we have to spend at least 19% of our appropriated budget on circulating materials that go out. Um, the 44,217 does not quite equal 19% of 233,842, but that's okay because we also use donations. Um, to augment that amount because the state wants you to spend 19% of your appropriation on circulating materials but they don't care where that money comes from. Oh really? Um, so we can get away with not doing 19% here um, because we have a gentleman who donates 2500 a year for us to spend on historical materials. That bumps us back over the 19%. <laughs> Other supplies I count is anything that is um, like directly related to books and um, media uh, circulation. So it's not pen, ink, paper stuff, but it's like book jackets, book sleeves, spine label stickers, barcode stickers, um, media casing, you know, what we use for basically to service the circulating collection rather than office supplies just for office use. I keep those separate. So that gives us our total expense budget and our total personnel budget, and then ignore that. Um, because then I realized that FY20 is a leap year and somehow having one extra day in February leads to almost an extra half a week mm -hmm. in the uh, the fiscal year. I was um, fear of that news by the way. <laughs> so we're open, exactly. Being we were exactly. open um, yep. one extra Monday and one extra Tuesday um, so I had to amend the budget to alleviate that so just be mindful that this is the budget as it is approved by the trustees right now, um, <coughs> hoping to get that fixed next Tuesday. So also ignore the First Amendment because today, <laughs> the First Amendment. I get this Excuse email me. From Jean. Ignore the First Amendment. Okay. Well, the, um, the amendment to the budget. Ignore the First Amendment to the Simon Fairfield Better. Public Library budget, not the United Better. States Constitution. <laughs> yeah. um, if you turn the page, you will see what are actually the accurate numbers once we all got into an office together and the grown-ups did real math um, because I was um, I wasn't quite right on the compensation scale for next year I was off by some pennies because I 
did math like you know I, I, I did in high school. Like we're getting 1.75 uh, colas, so I'm like, okay, so we'll take this year's pay scale, we'll multiply that by 1.0175, and then round Sounds the fives up so and far. the fours down. But the, the math doesn't quite work that way, right. um, so that had to be adjusted for. Um, so what Matt recommends and what um, makes sense is a budget that is actually $12 higher than what I calculated for. So I, I'm anticipating our final budget request will be $233,918 um, over my original calculation once we factor in the pay scale changes and whatnot. So if you look at the second column on the administrator's recommendation, it matches what Gene gave you from this budget projection. They're the same. And that's that's the goal is is just to be the same, um, just to make sure I could run the library with that amount since there was so much kind of question about the personnel budget because the operational budget is kind of it, it's tweakable um, because since we get our grant money we can augment it if we need to if we're under if we're under on personnel there's a problem. Um, so we just literally did the math, counted you know how many Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays there are next year, how many hours each person works those days, calculate those totals, and then so that gives us a good number of 171270, um, which is right there close to Matt's number. Um, but Matt's number is a little bit different because whereas I go through and look at the days and who works when and how that affects the numbers, you know, the municipal program, municipal programs just kind of brute force the formula in saying, you know, next week is a 52.4 a week fiscal year. If a person works on an average of this many hours per fiscal year, this is what we anticipate the budget will be. Um, mm -hmm. So their Thank estimate you for is, your work. is over mine, but it, it, it's $12. It. Thank so you. <laughs> that can go back into free cash if we don't spend it. I um, mean, it's better um, to be over than yeah, under. Yeah, I would rather be over than under, and it's not significant. You can buy lunch for everybody, right? No, no, you can not do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, yeah. I, I know, I know. I'm <laughs> just stick along. <laughs> She's $12. It's a pizza. It's it's I think Matt's, <laughs> Matt's words to Thank me were, you know, you can take your abacus and go over there. <laughs> um, no, I'm with you. So Thank we're you. here. <laughs> Misappropriation. <laughs> But yeah, we're close. Uh, I wanted to be right on that target with the service-based forecast. And you know, even though we could always use more money, um, I'm, I'm hoping I can you know sniff out more money from alternative sources, uh, you know, grants, donations, and all that kind of stuff. And on to congratulations that, on the green the, the green energy grant. Or was that is that what it was? That was all kind of Matt and Bill. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I can't take. Well, any they knew for that, that there was a need at the <laughs> library for sure. You know, with the mm -hmm. windows and whatever. So. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really pleased. That and our hope is that that can spring the board us. Um, I'm, sure. I'm actually meeting with, uh, <coughs> we're trying to sort of revamp the library renovation plans and come up with some alternative, maybe piecemeal, let's do what we can, mm -hmm. baby stepping our approach up. Mm -hmm. And you know, not anything real grandiose, but just doing what we need to get the basement usable and being able to yeah. get in from the parking lot yeah. with accessibility. Right. And um, I, I'm excited to... about the possibilities of this year. Because with the Green Communities Grant having gone in, that will make our grant applications to the Massachusetts Office on Disability much more attractive. Sure. Um, and if we have some solid plans, which we are working on, then I'm hoping we will have a really, really solid application this November. Um, and we'll be able to get some of that money and actually see. And break it down. And so see progress made. Because we don't need a lot of stuff done to the yeah. library. The yeah. first floor is, you know, it. It's gorgeous. I, I love it. And mm -hmm. everyone who comes in loves it. The basement with, you know, minor cosmetic stuff and just slapping in two bathrooms would be a great children's library. I mean, it's just a matter of plaster, really. Um, and then, you know, it's all about the bathrooms and the elevator and entrance because we got to have an egress and ingress that yep. you can use and we've got to have restrooms. Um, and you know, putting heads together, you know, we, we've kind of, you know, that doesn't have to be a two and a half million dollar project. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can get it done for cheaper, and I think that we will get it done for cheaper uh, within the next couple years. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about our special accounts because I know I've gotten questions about those in the past because sure. the library does have other resources rather than our municipal appropriation. This is um, the super secret discussion. Okay. So there, there's nothing secret about it. <laughs> um, 
Anything that's on the general ledger is not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> So other funds, other special accounts the library uses. Uh, we have the 53 and a half revolving account. There's currently $2,030.51 in it. That is what we get from um, fines, overdue fees and lost items. And the way that works is if um, every library has its own kind of policies for what they charge for overdue items. But if someone returns an item that belongs to Agawam, um, in Douglas, because they checked it out in Douglas and it's late, and oh. they accumulate a fine and they pay the fine at our CERC desk, we get to keep it because we're not going to, the libraries aren't going to be sending 60 cents back and forth between each other to the delivery <laughs> network. Um, so if you collect the fine, you get to keep it when it comes to circulation fees. Um, when it comes to lost items, if it, it goes back to the library from whence it belonged because it, it was a taxpayer asset. Um, we try to expend roughly what we took in the previous year when it comes to um, the revolving account. I've been actually spending it down a little bit year by year because the previous director kind of just didn't spend that money for a while and it built up. Um, but it's, it's there for books. People want books. Um, library grant is probably our biggest source of external income. That's the Library Incentive and Municipal Equalization grant money that's distributed by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Whenever we talk about um, losing our certification, if we drop below MAR, or we don't meet our minimum service requirements by being open a certain number of hours and spending that 19% on circulation, circulating materials, um, one of the, the, the things that hangs over us is we would lose the reciprocal borrowing privileges with other libraries, which would affect um, patrons the most, but we would also lose this grant, which entirely depends on the state's budget year by year. Sometimes it's 7000 sometimes it's 15000 um, Since I've been here, it's tended to average around $10,000 a year that we get. And we tend to get, we get half of it in like December, and then we get the other half in June, right at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so like, okay, we, we can't really budget for it, so we can sort of use it the following fiscal year. Um, that's money that we have tended to use for technology upgrades. Um, we've spent uh, almost $2,000 this year out of it on music and movement programs. We got a new Wi-Fi router because our old one was not keeping up. Um, we're trying, to, we're trying to, to cable and wire the downstairs so that we have a plug and go projector so that people can come in and do presentations and we can show movies and whatnot. Nice. Um, and then just other random things, like summer reading prizes. Um, we do buy some circulating materials through it. Nellie, would you do me a favor? Would you ask, would you leave this door open and ask them to please go in the, either leave <laughs> <laughs> or, or go in the other room? I mean, I, you know, it, it gets too hot in here. I should have said you Adam. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a badge on and everything. Here, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm reading my numbers. Don't worry. I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> um, Good. So Thank things like wires, job. wing nuts, getting copies of keys, batteries, coffee cups. Um, we use grant money for that. Um, we've used it for some bigger purchases in years past. Um, we don't always try to spend it down every year so that if a year <coughs> comes whenever we have to replace the printer or three computers and get new cabling in, then we use that for that. Um, the Carrick Fund is fairly new. Um, when when um, Bill Carrick died a couple years ago, his estate left um, the William and Janet Carrick grant with the Greater Worcester Community Foundation. And that is administered by the, the GWCF, and they distribute an amount to us out of that every year. Um, because we're not the only recipient of that. Okay. There's lots of different recipients. Um, and so we have been using that money to, for our music and movement program on Tuesdays. And so we fund music and movement out of the Carrick grant. Um, the YMCA Family Community B Partnership pays for it about 12 uh, weeks out of the year and then whenever those funds dry up then we use our library grant um, to pay for that. So so where is that listed? The, the, the one that you mentioned that Carrick actually... Fund? The Carrick Fund? It's, it's the third bullet down. Okay, right. Okay. 
Right now, there's only twenty-seven dollars and thirty-four cents in it. Um, yeah, you're spending money when there's nothing there, so I don't. No. <laughs> well, no. With there I was. We got five hundred and fifty. Um, okay. That's the balance as of okay. January thirty-first. Okay. So basically, we use that money until it's gone, and then it'll get repopulated next year. Okay, so th that's what I was wondering whether the whole the whole amount was gone or not. It's not okay. But when do you get the next chunk of some? Uh, I think it comes like in like early early July-ish. Okay, so Summertime. you should be getting it soon. Then. Beginning mm -hmm. of the fiscal year. Let's uh, slow things down a little bit. In July, that's far away. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's one of those funds that we... Well, it's not next January. Is what I'm we exhaust it down because Deb Hudgens leads an amazing program at the library every Tuesday at 1 o'clock um, for kids. And she sings and does a story time. It's music and movement. Um, basically, the... Uh, Anytime we can get the YMCA community fund to fund that, then she just sends their invoices to them. When they're not funding it, she sends her invoices to us, and we will pay her out of this account until we no longer have enough balance to do that. And then we switch to paying her out of the library grants. Cool. One way or another, you're going to have music and movement. Mm -hmm. And see, the next bullet down is library historical books. Um, Michael E. Moan is a lawyer in Boston, and every year he donates $2,500 in memory of his father to spend on historical nonfiction. Um, that's why we have an amazing American history collection in our nonfiction section that is unparalleled, I think, in the Blackstone mm -hmm. Valley. Nice. Um, if you want to do, if you want good history books, then our library is the place to go. Mm -hmm. um, Building donations, um, that's currently 16559 That's money that's been donated by individuals over years for library renovations and maintenance. Um, originally, I think the intent was those were donations that were going to kind of try to dovetail into a major renovation right. project, but as time wore on and maintenance was being neglected, that has had to, we've kind of, you know, shifted that in. So this year we've spent uh, a little over $1,000 uh, we installed a handrail out front next to the sidewalk. It had to be a special design so it didn't overlap the sidewalk and oh. get ran down by plows. Um, it's like not up the steps, it's down on the sidewalk itself because right. we had a handrail going up the steps but people yeah. were like, we can't get to the steps because you have to walk like over yeah. to the bank yeah. and then come up the grass because of the step down to the sidewalk. So we got that there. Um, we had to fix a broken window because one of the round windows on the back of the building just okay. kind of fell out one day um, so that was that was an issue um, and we replaced emergency lighting library donations uh, that account is at fifty thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars and four cents in terms of like the municipality and how it's treated that's one big account in terms of the way we treat it and track that money that's actually a whole bunch of little teeny tiny accounts because a lot of people will give money to the library and say well this is in memory of my dad and you know i want this money spent on x and so i keep track of that gene doesn't keep track of that no. so it's um it's it's an account that's at around fifty thousand dollars we've taken in one thousand seven hundred and thirty three this year um you know, one example is, you know, we've gotten $550 this year in memory of Michael Giancola. His favorite book was Dune, um, in the <laughs> Dune series, and yeah. he was this big sci-fi fantasy guy. And, you know, it, it was a tragic loss, you know, kind of for me personally, because his reading tastes and mine lined up so much. <laughs> um, so um, they asked uh, people to donate to the library in lieu of flowers. So we got a total of $550 out of that. So we made a nice book plate that has a dune on it and mm -hmm. a little uh, cool. sign in the sci-fi and so um, so for the next you know until that's exhausted whenever I'll buy science fiction material for the library then nice. I will if it's something he would like then I'll use his money on it and he'll get a book plate and the book will be in memory of him <clears throat> um, the building donations with interest fund is it's the same basically as the building donations in intent, but those have been donated with the explicit instructions that the uh, interest remain with account, the account. Because by default, anytime we get a gift or a donation, it goes into these accounts and the interest that accrues goes into the general fund. So the interest that accrues in this account stays with this account so that it can grow. Um, 
A Simon Fairfield Trust Fund is another interest-bearing account, which we have just, it, it's remained static for the last fiscal years, or for the last few years, it's accumulated $22.43 in interest this year. So, um, you know, if we ever lose our municipal appropriation, we've got that. <laughs> um, the R.S. Douglas Non-Expendable Trust is a $10,000 lump of money that was donated many decades ago with the stipulation that it cannot be spent on anything. Um, it stays there. And we are only allowed to spend the interest on it, which goes into the account below it, the R.S. Douglas Expendable Trust, which currently sits at 3067 And that's the interest born from that other trust, and we can spend that on children's books. That's the stipulation for that. <clears throat> and while we don't keep the funds, we do charge fees for printing, copying, and faxing, and we turn those over to the general fund. So far, we've turned over six fifteen twenty one this fiscal year. Um, so we help a little, a little teeny tiny bit. <laughs> but like the main benefit of the library isn't so much in revenue generation, so much as it's just in in savings. Like the, I love the value calculator because you know people. Some people are like, oh, it's the library. It's it's a sacred, unassailable institution. It's an island of cultural. It's like, no, I want numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so like how, you know, what was the return on investment for the, the Douglas taxpayer on the library? And it's always really good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I pride, I'm proud of us for that. Well, I know I save $120 at least in my book club fees. <laughs> yes, I get my book to the library. And so you take donations as well? Yes, we do. Um, we take donations of books. They don't usually end up in the collection um, because the collection, books take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. And so people are like, I've got a bin of books. Well, by the time I put those on the shelf, that might be three bays, mm -hmm. you know, of, of stuff. And so we have to keep our collection curated and current. And um, so like the material that goes in, goes in thoughtfully. But what we do do, <laughs> what, what we do with donations is, um, we scan them to see if they're wanted by Better World Books, which is a charitable vendor. Cool. Um, I have volunteers who come scan them. And so like, if you're ever buying books on Amazon, and you'll see like there's so many used copies available yeah. for mm -hmm. such and such now. Yeah. Better World Books is one of those vendors. Oh, okay. um, so for every book we take to them that they sell, we get mm -hmm. a commission back that we can then spend on books from Better World Books. And then if they can't use the books, if they're not sellable, then they will either you know ship them off to charity or just recycle them. Um, because, you know, there, there, there's no shame in Space. recycling mm -hmm. a book to turn it into a new book. You don't mm -hmm. have to kill a tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or either that, and, or they go to the Friends of the Library yes. books. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Which are big. They actually generate, the last book sale generated um, 700 and something dollars. No, we, in total, it was about 1400 for this past for year. For this past year. And this year, it looks like we're going to be doing three sales instead of two. No, um, I, the, the one that I mentioned for Labor Day, or Memorial Day, is replacing whatever one we had before. Oh, the uh, recycling day? Because yeah. we've historically mm -hmm. done one with the recycling day at the farmer's market yep. during Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. Oktoberfest is the big They're one. They're moving the farmer's market this year, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. where's that going? Up to the farm. Up, up to the Douglas farm. Douglas Orchards. And we're actually going to have a presence there. Um, we're planning on having a uh, library story time at the farmer's market every Saturday at 10 a.m. so mm -hmm. that if you want to go browse the vendors, you can yep. leave your kids on the library quilt, and um, there will be stories, and while you can go... Okay. And we're going to tie them down to the ground with little... <laughs> we can do that. That could be fun. I was thinking more like, you know, one of those wireless fences. Yes. And a whole bunch of <laughs> Put a little collar on each one of them. Yeah, yeah. nice. What you're here for? Just in case. Can I ask you? <laughs> yes, um, You know, I noticed something like the Douglas Expendable Trust mm -hmm. clearly has much more than just one year refilling with interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So the general, the, the request for budget funding this year on line 55. 500 circulation material asks for what, 43,441, right? Mm -hmm. Do you tend to use, you know, the Douglas Expendable Trust Fund rollover money mm -hmm. first for, let's say, children's books mm -hmm. where it's available before looking to use general fund money for that kind of book? Historically, I try to use general fund money first. Um, because that's money that we have that we've gotten to spend. 
Um, one story behind this account is it kind of wasn't sorted out until last year, two years ago, because it was sitting in a Vanguard account that was not touchable. Um, and so we got it, we finally got like everything turned over properly to the treasurer and everything's there. Um, so that had been building up for a long time. I'm hoping to spend that um, on really soon. Like we're, we're turning this loft of the library into a uh, into an area where you can come for out of school education. Um, so for homeschoolers, for after school projects, whatnot. And we're wanting to populate it with curriculum-y kind of stuff. Um, curriculum-y. So mm. Curriculum-y. That's a word. <laughs> But no, historically, I try to use, uh, I, I try to, to maintain as much of that 19% materials budget from our municipal appropriation and then use the rest as extra. Um, you say can make a again. case that say, that's not the responsible that thing to do. Cause, but well, I, I think you have to anyways because you have to have the, meet that mark. The two and you and have to meet the mark. So yeah. the mark has to be what's on what's driving it? Yeah. Yes. The MAR drives the okay. overall budget, okay. and I want to spend as much of that on circulating materials as okay. possible. Okay. Mm. And I try, I try to get above that 19% oh, oh, oh. as I much as I can. I did see what you weren't here. I did. <laughs> because Doesn't the mean 19% when you weren't here, I didn't see opportunities. <laughs> is is a state minimum. The state says you have to spend 19% of your budget on circulating materials. In my mind, as a public library, if we're only at that threshold, mm -hmm. we're kind of failing. Um, yeah. We should be spending more than that of our budget on that. I mean, that's the primary service of the library. Mm -hmm. It's the function is to circulate things to get people to read. Um, Ellie, you mentioned uh, the trustees. Did, do you have an account that isn't listed here, evidently? No? Mm -mm. Okay, so everything is here. Okay, so which one is the trustee account that they. I missed. Did I see? It's not it's labeled. All of these accounts are a trustee's account. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Where you the put money. Of that account. Do you put money into all of them? Mm -hmm. no. I mean, the, you, you get you do mm -hmm. book sales and whatever. Oh no, that's oh, friends. That's the friends. 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 Oh, the friends. The friends oh, yeah. of the no, library the is a separate five hundred one c three of library supporters. They're the ones who send out the um, membership flyer once a year. They do the yeah. the book sales, and then they have their own um, secretary, treasurer, president. Okay. And then I can. So ask that them doesn't for go funds. through the town, then. Right? That doesn't That's go through the town. But we do provide um, about three thousand dollars a year to Justin mm -hmm. for um, special programs and oh, things okay. that aren't covered by the, sure. mm -hmm. the town budget. Yeah. So programs, so. website, constant contact newsletter software, oh. <clears throat> public outreachy kind of stuff. Outreachy. Outreachy. A lot of wise. <laughs> <laughs> What are digital loans? What's that? That is um, e-books and e-audio books. Oh, okay. Okay. Hopefully everyone has explored the Libby app. If you have a smartphone. It's great. Mm -hmm. a smart yeah. smartphone. <laughs> what is that? Amazon Prime, so I can get all my audio books on. Yeah, but how much do you pay for that? <laughs> I this is true. Know, but yeah, there are other methods. Any other uh, questions for the library? <laughs> <come out. laughs> so that we have other people sure. here that and would like to present yes. as well. And we don't attack you for not using the library. I do use the library. Just, just check out Libby. Go to the library website, go to Overdrive, and check out the apps. Can you give them the Yes, you can get ebooks on Kindle. I never have lots of ebooks. Right. Any other questions about my budget? No. no. I think we're I done. Think we're Thank good. you very Thank much. You. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Good luck, Adam. Thank you. How do I need it? Well, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. So am I walking in again? Wait a minute. It's not how many times Nine. I know, but it's just. I know. Let me hang on my own. Oh, okay. I saw him poke these. Oh, no. I, no, I, he asked me to put these on every. Oh, that on every. Okay. Thanks for coming. So, what if you're saying? It's there. Okay. She'd like to fulfill. Look at who's here. Hello. Captain Ferno. Oh, yeah. He has multiple hats. Okay. You do. I do, huh? You so, I, so, I can just run through that quick. Um, so, I, five you years to, ago, I was. No, I'm put as the maintenance manager. So, okay. um, Twelve years ago, I started at the highway department, and I also I have water licenses, so I work with the water sewer, water main breaks. Eighteen years ago, I became an EMT. Twenty years ago, I sat on the fire department, so I still do all of it. 
so that's kind of how it works. He's been, you've been adding on. Yes, I still, and I'm now actually your OSHA manager for the town because we fall into OSHA, so that's my new my new adventure in stormwater management in OSHA. So that's what I'm going to classes for and trying to deal with all that right now. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Busy guy. Yeah, You're having very, fun yet? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, you know, it's always fun. Okay, do you know the new members? Did you hear them I, mention their I, names? I did not. Okay. I'm Lynn Mazzulli. How you doing? Hi, good morning. How you doing? I do. I know everyone. Oh, I know you. Oh, I don't know you. I didn't make it. Look at you. I always told you I was going to make it. I only miss Cap. Do now or do I need to go back? I'm on. Only thing that we can talk about is uh, my salaries. I'm assuming they already know about that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so I can jump into expenses. And what are you assuming? That you talked about salaries. That that's going on the highway. Matt had discussed all this. Okay, he did mention that. Yeah, that that's so. I mean, my expenses are off that we have listed here. So I think I'm good. So with all of your added duties and whatever, we're not zeroing you out. No, no, no. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. No, I got another 23 years in the Don't worry. What's, what are we covering? We're covering maintenance. We're building maintenance uh, with Adam Ferno. So um, you want to go line by line? I don't know what, how Tell you're doing it. Tell me how things are going with so that first. You have lists that I, I believe they do. This you one. You have yeah. all these lists that I always yeah. keep. All of them. Pam always says they never get short, which they don't. So um, it's all just I keep track of everything that I find as I go through my checks every week and. Little things. It can be just little things like trimming shrubs, the handrail, handrail painting, the things that I need to cover. So that's what the big list is. Um, it also the front of the large list here has the my capital list that I always present every year. So the top items are funded: uh, municipal fire alarm system, municipal gym windows, police department windows, municipal air conditioner replacement, and municipal first floor air duct cleaning. So yeah. those are projects um, that we're going to stop short. What do you mean those are funded? So we funded already have uh, the town meeting. Uh, air duct cleaning was a couple of years ago, actually. We already okay. did the Funded through FY19. Funded. Okay. So we have the funds. Okay. In that that okay. amount is funded, and in we have that amount to uh, start these projects. They are with okay. the Building Facilities Committee and, um, and Matt, and we've been working slowly towards starting these projects. Um, then all the other projects you'll see, that's what I presented for capital this year. Um, and are these done in priority order? Yes, they're in priority order and by FY20. So you see FY20, those are the ones I presented for this year. And then, you know, Matt asked us for a five-year plan. So FY20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And, of course, these change. I mean, this year these five are my priority, but one thing happens and then we flip it and change it. I'm confused. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh oh. So, the FY20 five line, uh, line items. Mm -hmm. Capital. That's capital. That's capital. Those so that's sorry. in addition All to capital. this budget. Are they two different departments? Yes, they'd, they'd be two different budgets. Capital. The capital. Uh, so every department budget. submits a. Gene. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Gene. every yeah. every department submits what they want for a capital request, and then the capital committee has a series of meetings and they rank them. And we've covered that year over year. Are we covering that? We they have not ranked the projects for FY20 yet. So okay. Adam presented these to capital, but so has a fire police, okay. and so they have to rank all the budgets. Why are we seeing them right now in this context? What do they mean to me? He's just telling you that these are the ones that he put He's forward to capital for FY20 consideration. So really will we it, so. see them in a on a different night? You will see them on a different night by the capital committee. That's if, if that's the if they make it I these. That's yeah. the context I was looking yeah. for. Thank you. So, so as you see, those like I said, all FY21, 22, 23, 24. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these are just. Just what I'm looking for at this, you know, for the next five years, and all the list behind that is just items that I find, items that I see, you know, um, things sure. that I need to do, yeah, sure. But things that I, I see that we need to, you know, I just keep checking off and I add if I find something. Adam's else. honey do list, right? It is. It's exactly what it is. It, it's all lists that we got to get, you know, I'll get done and as money allows and as you know, Fine we allows. have funding. 
Um, I try to take care of all the emergencies right away, and then everything else gets put on the list, and I try to just go through it as I can. Uh, we take care of them. The, uh, this is the other list here. To answer Lynn's okay. question, yes, they do accept donations to do the work anywhere. That's right, yes. right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Anytime, <laughs> yeah. You anticipated um, that. If you want to pick something, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Building Say facilities maintenance department, this sheet right here. It just has things that we completed. I just put a little summary. There's a lot more than this. Oh, on the back. Um, just the things thing that we've completed right. for uh, FY19 and projects that we're looking at upcoming for 19 and 20. Of course, like I said, some of the capital ones that were already funded are on the top, but um, you know, uh, just going through. We had the main roof patched here again. It's leaking again. Unfortunately, it's main roof here is in bad shape. It was a 15-year roof back in 1995, mm. um, and we we had a leak upstairs. We actually got an insurance claim out of it. Yeah. The roof got patched. It, you know, it only cost me about all well, this stuff, $750 to patch it, but it's you know it's actually leaking again, and we have to have the guy back now. That the snow's Same all place. Gone. Different places. It's all, yeah, so there's two roofs that back 15 years ago. They put a, a rubber roof over the old tire and gravel mm -hmm. roof. Because they didn't have the funds, mm -hmm. so they just so now in order to do it right, we've got to peel Rip it off. off. So that's a yes. huge project. That's like a three hundred and somewhat thousand yep. dollar project. Mm -hmm. It's it's yes. not a little project. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. so we have a patch. Just uh, different any grant things. possibilities. So Matt has been working with Green Communities um, mm -hmm. in trying to push them to yeah. get this to fit. This, this is our main house, guys. Exactly, and yeah. that's so Matt has been working with them, and there is some communication back and forth to see right. if this will fit in. Into yeah. some of that category, okay. so there is possibilities for stuff like that. Thank you. Um, see, and this the last one is just an inspection list. I always just this is what I do every a lot of them are once a year, some of them uh, once a month. You, you know, per the OSHA laws, I have to check every fire extinguisher once a month. Make make sure you know in, in every building that um, that I deal with, whether it's the municipal center, the library, the senior center. And I have to go tag it. There's a tag you have to sign off. And Where are you mm -hmm. looking at, Adam? Oh, you sorry, said I didn't go in the same order. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. It's okay. Order. So oh. it's it's a few okay. pages back. Okay. Thank so you. It just says you know inspection slash maintenance list, and it just mm -hmm. tells you. Oh. You yeah. know I have um, OSHA has inspections that we have to start doing that aren't even, that are not on here yet. Yeah. Um, but Maya, so we get insurance credits for a lot of these inspections that I do, so we can actually save money. So a lot of these I count. So when I do a building inspection for Maya, um, that way we get insurance credits for it. And, and, it, covers. and it covers. And it actually helps me by doing a building inspection. Right. Mm -hmm. Helps me add to my other list. I see something else that isn't Do you on really my need list. any help? Yeah, no. <laughs> we can make it work. But uh, so that's these lists anyway. That's what all these are. I always try to provide, you know, everything that I'm doing. And then we have the budget. So... I'm just going to make sure I'm on the same yeah, thank you. Make sure I'm on the same one. Yeah. And that's it. All the numbers are the same, and it looks like they're Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So, uh, top line item is electric for 30000 this year. Um, it has gone down. We had um, the windows replaced here, which has helped greatly. We don't have the heating systems been replaced, so the electric heaters have started, have all gone away, which is very nice. So, that's gone down some. and. We've made a we made good strides there. Um, the heating oil we have it's going up, but that's actually prices have gone up. We were actually paying like a dollar seventy three at one time. Now we're up to two dollars and six cents, and I'm sure it's going to continue to rise. Um, water sewer. Is oh, we have the new furnace, right? We do have a new furnace. Yeah, it's the price, yeah. Per, it's gallon the price per gallon of heating sure, oil. Right. That's that's yeah. the difference right now. Um, Water sewer again. That's just a regular, normal increase that we have in here. I think Matt has what two percent increase on every on some of these light items. So um, repairs and maintenance again. That's what that big list is. So the fifty-one thousand that's here is a lot of that stuff gets done with that big list that I have. You know, some of the concrete repair. So if there's mm -hmm. any trip hazards, and that's what the line item that comes out of. Other property that's used for. Um, I have all. Pest, pest can companies come in and they check for mice and they lay up the traps and everything like that so we don't have any issues. Um, contractual service, this is a new item, a new column last year. Matt had us add contractual services. So anything we have a, a maintenance contract with will fall under this one. So again, this is like my HVAC, my heating systems. Um, <coughs> can't remember what else is something else that comes out of that. Elevators, stuff like that. So that's that line item. 
Uh, telephone, 4,000, that's been our good average for us. We've kept it the same. Uh, cellular phone, that's not going to change much. Still 685. Office supplies, 250. Building and equipment repairs, 5,000. That's stuff that I do myself. So if it's like, if I can see that some of my line items is I need a uh, electrical cover because one's broken on a socket or an outlet, I can go to Koopman's, buy one and put it on. This is the line item. It's all just Koopman's and um, Granger and stuff that I buy for myself to do the work. Uh, custodial supplies, we're at 2,000. That's been a good average for us. Groundskeeping supplies, that's ice melt. Um, We've been cut for fertilizer. We wanted to do some fertilizing. We haven't um, been able to with the front lawn. That's kind of was cut before I started here. Um, but hopefully one day we'll be able to get enough money back to get some of that done. But it's basically ice melt, um, ice uh, spreader stuff for groundskeeping. Any grass seed or any damage from the plow, this all gets some loom and I'll put some grass seed on it. Let's see. Uh, gasoline is for the truck for 1285. And again, that's basically the gas price fluctuating. And a lot of that cost, that used to be a lot higher, um, but I kind of bounce back and forth so much that John in the highway department kind of takes half of the gasoline off of me because I'm in a different truck, so I just run down here in that, their truck instead of the one I have. But that's pretty much all the numbers themselves. Yeah. Well, any questions? I have no problem answering any. Do you think he should um, expand on his list a little bit? Was that? No. Mm -hmm. No, I just didn't understand at the no, beginning. No, I no, no, the, I just, no, no, that's no. In, the, in the volume. And we, we're, I think we're going to rank on capital this Friday. I think it's supposed to be, but to start the rank, I believe it's supposed to be because we're trying to get that, that in. Yeah. Um, so we'll and see and how finance this committee is supposed to get a person on that committee, and I just. I, it's very difficult. I think we've, we've, we've had issues with getting a quorum ourselves. I know this board has too. It's just been very difficult to get people. And I wish it, on, and I do say it all the time, and I wish it wasn't department heads on that board because I think it'd be better to present it to other people like yourself to present and then have you guys do it instead it's myself on the board yeah. john's on the board ken i mean it's we're all <coughs> no it's, it, it's you're right it, it, it needs to be it. other people it shouldn't right. be us you I know agree. but again we do the best we can what we have thank you thank you thank any you. more thank questions thank you that's great thank you okay let's work that straight no, uh, town administrator is not here. I make a motion to it. Oh, not yet. Approve the minutes. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm Just here. Just practice. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. I did I attach the minutes. minutes for you. Yeah, but we don't, you didn't attach all of them, did you? I Just did. one. Oh, you I, did? I believe I did. G and B. Before we get to the approval of the minutes, next line item, town administrator fiscal reports. Did I miss a memo? He's, he's, no. He's a board of selections. Will we swing back around to yeah, that? Yeah, because he came in before and said, are you ready for me? I can, I think. No, no, check. I don't mind going out of order, but will okay. we be swinging back around I to that tonight? Him. Is I the expectation will. that would I will, be? I will find that out while you, you approve your minutes, I'll go find that out. Matt asked me to put that on for every month. Mm -hmm. That's my question. Whether he's here or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. It, it may pass by if he has nothing to say. I'm okay. And if he doesn't have anything yeah, okay. to say, if he has something to asking. say, he'd be here. He right. knows it's on. That's the, that's the, sure? yes. Yeah. Yes, no. Yeah. No, okay. no. This is done as standard. Perfect. Um, that's Great. why it's there. Great. Um, same with reserve fund transfers, rip vouchers, and and the snow. I thought, let's put, the, you know, reserve fund uh, and vouchers he, was from Gene. Did he update you on the snow last week? Uh, last week or the time before that? Time that. before. Okay. Anything we've got to cover there? No. No, re no reserve fund or anything there. No reserve fund. Do we have any information no, on, on what's going on with the with the health insurance? Uh, we don't, except that there is only two. Well, I believe the teachers are meeting on April first, which is very late for us. So we can't make any decisions on anything until we. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very late. Hmm. But did he find a company? I mean, he has to talk to the teachers first. So there's got to, the teachers have to be accepting. In on yeah, yeah. They need to have some sort of a buy-in, I think. Yeah. Well, that they're willing. They have to. He has. They have to have the conversation. I believe they're they're meeting on the and 
April 1st is what the date you told me. Mm. We don't self-fund our insurance, do we? We are looking at a self-insurance, but a joint purchasing group. Yeah. And Harvard Pilgrim would be the company. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to listen to the presentation, we did go to the Webster Library on, and it is on their website. Um, Oh, uh, March. Yeah, a couple. Seventh. Okay. March seventh. So Harvard Program did a presentation to. I think we only had one member from Douglas from the IEC um, present. And that was the police representative. Um, I was there. The treasurer collector was there. Matt was there. And they did a presentation to the Webster. It was Webster some members? of Dudley Charlton were there, mm -hmm. as well as some of, some of the Douglas people. Now, and they have done presentations to the unions. That was last Monday, which was the 11th. Mm -hmm. um, Gallagher came down and presented to them as well. Now, our whole town is in it, right? Like, the, everybody's municipal employees, the, the, the school department, the highway department. Correct. Everything Correct. else. We have one. Right. Yeah. yeah. With Dudley, uh, Charlton is just the school department that's going to be in this. Well, they have a regional school. They have a regional yeah. school. Cause oh, Webster Town. Webster Town would be in it. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the town of Dudley and the town of Charlton are in something else altogether, the town employees. So, so we are, I, I, you know, it's, it's making me, I will tell you, it's making me a little nervous. So only Harvard because of the timing. Right. We're looking, you know, we have to roll it out. We typically have our open enrollment around April 23rd to May 22nd. We mm -hmm. like to have it up for 30 days. Mm -hmm. We have our health fair, uh, wellness fair, you know, the day after the election. So, you know, that, that is tight. I so Harvard Silverham came back with the, yes. the best proposal. Yes. Bring it up and in new business. I Bring it up. I seem in, to remember Matt saying something right. about, yep. you know, there could be an 11% increase. That's Correct. what Outside. you were looking at with the regular right. model, Correct. the traditional. Bring so this will be, we'll be freeing up, up yes. some money for the right. It would be, and I don't have, I mm -hmm. don't have the exact mm -hmm. increase. It will be an increase over what we have currently, mm -hmm. um, but it it definitely won't be the eleven percent. Okay. The other thing that you're going to be looking at, and when we start reviewing articles for the special, we will have to uh, fund the equity portion in this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that has to be in place for July 1st. So that would be an article in the special town meeting so that that's in place for July 1st. Okay. But it would be the exact same plan for the employees of Douglas. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they have three tiers or, mm -hmm. I don't know, with bronze, mm -hmm. whatever you want to refer to it as, but our plan will be the bronze plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's so the employees will have. So that, the other right? towns are offering bronze, silver, and gold, is what you're I, I'm not or? sure. Yeah. They, they, okay. they may, yeah. I don't know what they could I guess it doesn't really matter. matter. It, just it as may long, be yeah. an option yeah. for them because okay. it would save them money to have a high deductible thing. Remember, we're one of the first communities right. to do right. that. Right. Um, yeah. To have it as a sole right. option. Right. Okay. So it, it is consistent with what we have. Mm -hmm. they, the employee would not be losing any benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what do our uh, retirees, uh, what's their uh, amount that they have to pay in their portion? Because the uh, they, uh, people who work pay, what, 25% in the no, it's an 80-20 for the current employees, and it's 50-50 for retirees. Which is the minimum. Because in other communities, they pay a higher percentage. The town pays 80%? Of the active employees, retirees of 50 50. Now, how many do you know if the retirees stay on the town plan or they go off the middle? Oh, field? Carol, we're not going to have a discussion <laughs> about insurance right now. <laughs> That's the biggest, not, the biggest not on the agenda. It is, but yeah. I think we should yeah. want yeah. to table the discussion yeah. until we have the. Yeah. Um, just that will be its own agenda item. Yes, Matt. Mm -hmm. So, Hi, Gene, is it safe to say that we could have that as an agenda item for the April 2nd meeting? They're talking health there won't be much more time. You're right. First. <laughs> Even if it's just a, to a summary, a topical summary on the agenda. It, we, right? There's no other place to put it. 
That's right. Well, we, we, we could paper our way from here to Texas with yeah. all the documents we've yeah. been given. I, and I don't need that. Lynn might, no, but I don't need that. This I, is <laughs> No, and, and I yeah. defer to your mm -hmm. more Next greater case. familiarity sure. in the area, but at least a presentation on the second, because, Gene, would there be any other time? No, because and actually we have cable, water, sewer, and the town administrator on the second. Right. Mm -hmm. And then on the 10th, we were actually voting, mm -hmm. right? The public hearing, yeah. correct. So okay. I'd rather on the second get at least what information we've got. Will we have all numbers by the second? The goal is to have... You know, the warrant's pretty well done. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. I think so this is the biggest piece that we're waiting on is the health right. insurance. Okay. Health insurance and property casualty. Um, okay. Okay, so that was the town administrator's report. That was excellent. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I vote to approve the minutes of January, the He's January 22nd oh, meeting. Thank oh, you I for think coming. I, by I see a mouth opening down the end there. <laughs> like, wait a minute, it's my turn. Yeah, they, have you got to take the minutes down? Were you waiting for me? No. They, no. They were, <laughs> we moved they ahead. Had, yeah, they were going to approve the minutes and come back to you. That's fine. Okay. I kind of thought we'd close that agenda <laughs> item. Oh, okay. If you can't, it's up to you. Uh, okay. I'll take my budget and go home. Then. Right. Well, so <laughs> let's, let's, I vote to approve the, I move to approve the uh, committee meeting minutes of Tuesday, January 22nd. We have to do them one at a time. Um, yeah. uh, the meeting? No, no we really. said approve the minutes of well, January 22nd. We typically we do them one at one oh, at a time. Yeah, sure. Was, you know, sure. come on, yes. I'm doing but this. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. We've got a motion yes. now. Okay. We need a second. Second. Right. Yeah. second. Okay. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will abstain because I was not here. Sure. Okay. I move to approve the meeting minutes for the meeting from. Tuesday, February 26th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to add language in the meeting minutes of Tuesday, March 12th. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Not really. Well, I know who is here and why. Oh, so it's got uh, on the second page, first, second, third paragraph. It indicates Mr. D'Amico asked to know about student fees. Mr. Argyll suggested he attend a school committee meeting. And I would like to add Mr. D'Amico pointed out that we were at a joint school committee meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second. That's to amend mm -hmm. the minutes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Your job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. And as amended, I move to approve the uh, meeting minutes of Tuesday, March 12th. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Back to the town administrator. Sure. Mr. Administrator, mm -hmm. what have you got for us? Against Jean's Sage Council. <coughs> wow. I'm going to distribute a draft budget in the form that it kind of looks like what you put in the FinCom flyer. Because I think at this point, to understand what we're going through, we kind of need to see the how it all filters down to the bottom line. In this document, I'm most confident of the compensation figures because we have scrubbed our knuckles off this compensation budget. I think we've made quite a few. It's more about presentation, but getting the presentation correct as to a stipend versus a part-time employee versus a management employee versus uh, a non-exempt employee. Because we, those designations matter and they should tie back to our chart of accounts. So we haven't just been trying to put numbers next to people's names. We've been trying to put the right account numbers next to their names and score them appropriately. And, um, you've already heard me talk about Adam Furno and moving him to a different 
uh, setting. We've done that with a couple other people too, so we can prove that. We've been thinking carefully about capturing the effect of the number of different days in the year. It sounds like the silliest thing in the world, but after I added it all up today, the leap year alone is a $15,700 swing in the personnel budget. So it's it's something we want to keep track of because it doesn't repeat. And then there's the one year when you're short, you go down to 52. Um, so we've been trying to accommodate all those nuances because compensation is probably the biggest part of the budget. Now. I'll, I'll pass this around so we can go through the general categories. And just to remind people, it only affects the hourly employee salary. Right. Employees don't get additional compensation for salary. Yeah. So I would draw attention to the word draft, mm -hmm. which appears in all capital letters. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, column five, fiscal 20 draft mm -hmm. as of March 19th. 2019 and we have you know fairly uh, a great deal of confidence in all those numbers on this page until you get to the technology function uh, in the technology function I think we're going to be making some changes here uh, in the fall we moved money into this account because we had some labor intensive activity we we hired an outside consultant to replace uh, a one day a week person that was here under an intermunicipal agreement and the technology consultant has done a fabulous job of identifying really that we needed to rebuild, a strip out and rebuild our network and what she's done with the funds that were made available by special town meeting in the fall. So going forward, I think there will be a need for higher spending than there was in fiscal 18 but maybe not all the way up to the point that we got to in the fall. Uh, we do have Microsoft uh, 7 running on most of our machines. We've got to get up to 10. The 7 will not be serviced after a few more months. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, uh, aware. there's a, yeah, a painful process that will go through there. Um, flagging. They're going to this more, though. Yes, they are. Because now, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So the change in Adam Perno's uh, compensation structure, you'll notice we take a portion of his wages used to be in public building maintenance. We're going to strike those and move them to highway. So you'll see an increase in highway and a reduction here that are more or less equal. The Board of Selectmen just approved the overall approach to this, um, where we will bring him to a PM5 step 10 for all of his hours and a $2,000 a year stipend for his new responsibility as our OSHA compliance officer, which is a whole series of training and vigilance really on his part that is above and beyond his existing job description. I thought that was a way to, to, to keep his head above water because the um, simply moving him to PM5 step 10 was actually a big cut. So the stipend brings him slightly over what he was. Uh, the police budget reflects all of Chief Miglianico's requests. I thought that all of his requests were very wise. Um, his compensation budget grows this year, and I misspoke that night. I said that we'll, we had a catch-up call. That was actually a year ago. Well, his budget grows a little bit this year because he's got some new officers <coughs> who are graduating from the probation step to Patrolman 1. That's the biggest step in the pay scale of the police department. It's a $6,000 step just for that one employee. <coughs> You'll recall that he also wants to promote one of his dispatchers to an administrative assistant part-time, so there was a step increase there as well. Uh, but he holds the line on expenses, and he, he asks for that extra cruiser. That's also a right. wise thought, so that is in the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, Fire is another place we always have to put a flag next to the fire department, ambulance department, because we're uh, sorting out, I'm still sorting out the creature, the 56 hour work week is quite a creature under the law because the Fair Labor Standards Act limits firefighters to 53 hours a week on average, and that those extra three scheduled hours on average are what's called scheduled overtime or mandatory overtime. So. 
I'm just trying to make sure I know exactly the mechanics because many different municipalities use the same system but pay it out differently. Now, I don't think we're smoothing. Gene tells me we're riding it. So if they work a 72-hour week, they, they get a paycheck that reflects a 72-hour week. And when they're short, when they work a 48, they get paid for 48 rather than a paycheck for 56 every, every week. <clears throat> That's all well and good, but I just I want to be able to double check the numbers. What we did do here, you see some movement between fire and ambulance. In my view, every single employee who is assigned to the ambulance department and whose wages are paid out of special receipts account should be an individual qualified at the ALS level because that's what we are being, that's what we're charging fees to our customers, our patients, because we're an ALS level service. <coughs> so everyone in that function should be a paramedic. So that's what we've done. We've taken the firefighter yeah. basic and moved him up to the fire budget and taken the paramedic that was assigned to fire and moved him over to the ambulance. We had to leave one lieutenant in the fire department budget because under no circumstances would he not have a lieutenant. He'd always have a lieutenant. And the lieutenant is one level of pay regardless of whether you're a paramedic. The building department, one last flag that I would put in. What's going on here is a lot of things. This department's been reorganized. As you know, we have moved from a part-time schedule with a lot of coverage early in the morning and late at night and one day a week to two full days a week. And one of the things we were really looking to do was modernize the department. So first of all, to review the fee schedule and make sure that we are keeping up with other towns and the preliminary indication is we are not. So on the Board of Selectmen's packet tonight, they were given a draft rewrite of the building permit fee structure that would take us into competition or, or roughly the same level of competition as Uxbridge and Oxford and all of our surrounding communities. What people are doing is they're getting away from more or less arbitrary per square foot values, and they're going to use the worksheet that's in the building code that's published by the, the International Code Commission for valuing different types of projects. Square footage still plays a, a role when certain fits and finishes, but it takes discretion out and it makes it more formal. And then you assign your building permit fee according to value, so by a $1,000 value, as opposed to square foot. Um, it's all very intelligent. It would make things much cleaner but it would also probably raise additional revenues. The other project that we have in that department, and Mark will speak to some length about it, is an attempt to move to e-permitting. So that's 24-7. I can log into the building department, fill out a building permit application, especially if I'm a roofer and I just need, it's almost a formality. I'm gonna pay my 15 bucks or whatever it is just to do a roof. Why run to town hall? I can pay it online and get my application oh, you're online. Be able to pay with a credit card? Yeah, and oh, then you'll be good. able to yeah. print out the permit. Yeah. Okay, uh, appropriate. So that that's an improvement that we really need to do. It's not really crazy money. It's more of an expense annually because it is a subscription to a pretty whiz bang software system. Tree Warden, I think you heard last time. Civil Defense, there's a small increase there. That's Code Red, which is the phone notification service that the town now has subscribed to. Uh, in Street Lighting, which is more than halfway down the page, you see that we're reducing the cost considerably. That is on the advice of our consultant. That is where we have ended up after we did the Street Light Project in terms of annual run rate. So it's other public works. You have landfill, yep. monitoring wells, and street lighting. Street lighting is going to go down from 45,000 a year to a little bit more than 17. Good job. On the health insurance. <laughs> uh, I'm just going through this really quickly. So uh, when you turn the page and you see the schools, the numbers get a little bit bigger here. So right now we've, we're calling for a 2% increase, which would be $266,470 increase. We're being told to anticipate that the school bus contract, if it is left unmodified, would be another $200,000 increase in the budget. 
we believe we do have a potential discussion there about reducing that amount of increase oh. um, that we're pursuing with energy, but it is in the hands of the school committee at the moment to make some policy decisions. Then you see the assessment for BVT. While it skyrocketed last year, this year it's up uh, a somewhat more reasonable amount, still high. But then we get the total insurance and employee benefits. That is a roll-up of several large accounts, the most out-of-control accounts in the town, the one that we can't do anything about, the retirement fund. It increases 9.95% every year until we are all Worcester County here. Retirement. Worcester County Retirement. Um, and that is not the ARC. We are actually below the ARC, but that's what they feel like they can charge us. So. What does ARC mean? Annual, uh, annual required contribution. Okay. It used to be recommended contribution. Yeah. But we think of it as the recommended required. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we do take advantage of the 2% discount yeah. for paying that in July. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try our best. Yeah. Um, the other insurance benefits in here is, is our entire health insurance offer, which is not only coverage, but it's also the waiver program, the opt-out program, and the HSA funding is in this line. Now you'll notice we try to we're, we're trying to hold this down to a dull roar. Uh, it's you know the cat's out of the bag. The, the strongest suitor for our book of business is Harvard Pilgrim. They're a fully owned subsidiary called Health Plans Incorporated to be third party administrator for our active employees until we get to another bid for retirees in their benefit year because their benefit year just started in January. So we won't do that till the end of this year. So we're primarily talking about the actives at a 1.4% increase as opposed to a 10.8% increase. Now, <coughs> the five-year budget model is very, very sensitive to what we do for the next four years. We know we can't hold 1.4%, but if we could hold 4% instead of 6 <laughs> it makes a huge difference by the time we get to year five in, in terms of the flexibility of the town. So that is the, the hope that we have, is that we'll get that under control. Debt service, as you know, doesn't necessarily, uh, it, it's it's disclosed here, it's excluded. I think we have a we small have a piece of, of yeah, it's not excluded. but there, you know, Jean did a, a, Jean and her team did a masterful uh, refunding this year that gives the town some budget flexibility. And on the last page, we have not yet designated any money for stabilization. We'll get to that point a little bit closer to the end of the process. Now, with this draft budget, and is this a draft? It's only a draft. This is a draft. See the circles I already put on it? This would be, <laughs> this would be a draft draft. Um, I'm in a favorable position versus available revenue. So I have, I can close, I can do some of the things I've described without affecting the revenue number or without, you know, obviously without threatening the revenue number. So I've got a little bit of cushion here. Um, the selectman and I need to have a conversation about some, a couple of things. Um, executive compensation from our department has in control. I'm still trying to understand the process from here a little bit. This says draft. Is this Matt's draft? The Board of Selectmen's draft? A combination of both? Or just your draft? So what's going to... Whose math is this as of tonight? What's going to have is my draft as That's of tonight. That's my question. So okay. under the Town Administrator Act, if you read it carefully, it is my responsibility to submit a budget to the Board of Selectmen. I am accountable for that. I will work with my department heads to achieve a balanced budget. But the Board has to decide what goes on the warrant. They may determine to change some of these numbers. Mm -hmm. After when that, it comes to you. And when will that number. integration occur <laughs> under our current calendar? I'm hoping <coughs> to undraft the draft yeah. and write a budget message in a week's time. Okay. So the selectmen would have it for a week before they meet to decide what to do with it. And when do they meet to decide what to do I with it? I think they're going to call a special because technically last time's meeting was their second meeting this month. Okay. They're going to meet one more time in advance of your public hearing, well in advance of your public hearing, so they can do the warning. They have two weeks. Well, so will we see that item or document by April, t April 2? Mm -hmm. You have to. 
Yeah. That's why I'm circulating this because I, I think this is we'll gives see you by the two meeting. That seems tight. I, it, it's just the reality it has to be done. Do you, are they meeting on the 26th? Is that the main one? That's what I want to ask them to do. Oh, okay. And so on April 2's meeting for us, we should see one of these. And on April 2, does it become the board's budget proposal? No, after they... After they accept it. The way I think of it, uh, Howard, is the entire warrant is their warrant. So they've, they're going to close all, it all up and, when, and bundle it up. When when do they vote on it? <coughs> 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 March 26th. That's my question. Okay. So on April 2, it's the board's doc you're mm -hmm. submitting to us. So when did you say your, that? Your what date did you use? Like, excuse me. March 26th. What? March 26th? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So next week. Okay. Next Tuesday. Yeah. All right. So they'll look at your best pitch by then, integrate a vote on it. And in theory, what we'll see on April two. So how do you how do you integrate those health insurance numbers that may not come available till April one? It seems that brinksmanship is an important part of every negotiating relationship. So it's going into the budget at one point four percent. And what you know what we talk about at the table is what we talk about at the table. Um, my personal view is that it is not appropriate at this time to put any economic term on the table in order to get agreement to do this mm -hmm. health insurance thing. Right. Their contract is almost up. It will be up on June 30. So their okay. so communication, yes. Okay. Uh, formal process for exchange of ideas to continue to improve the plan, yes. Promise not to change the plan in any time in the near future. Very agreeable. But when we start to get into, well, can we change this program or that program, that's a conversation for the school committee to lead and for us to try to backdrop on. Um, that's the only appropriate way to do this. But we cannot sustain the rate increase yeah. Harvard Pilgrim is attempting to. Mm -hmm. So you'll tell us in April 2 what happened on April 1, but your numbers on April 2 will really have already been set March 26. Okay. And, and again, I think the important piece is the plan is not changing for the town employees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's all, right. all they're going to care about. Okay. Yeah. okay. I got that impression. We've had many, many meetings. Mm -hmm. Good meetings. Mm -hmm. Good. So we started off with the employee, uh, with the insurance advisory committee. Then we had a meeting with the executive board of the teachers union and the Teamsters. Then uh, that went on to faculty meetings, so we had two full-blown faculty meetings at, at both. Well, we, you know, we split the four schools into two meetings and fully briefed from there. We had a joint insurance advisory committee meeting with Webster and Douglas Charleston School District in Webster, in which Douglas was represented there. So we have talked it, not to death, but we've talked it out. I mean, there certainly is no stone unturned in terms of the issues. Matt, will you be prepared on April 2nd in front of us to talk to us in detail about the differences between what the Board of Selectmen approved and what you would have recommended or Since did any recommend? any change they make would be excruciating, yes, I would be prepared That's, to recall. I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to be able to hear that <laughs> night. This is the Board's numbers, mm -hmm. and I don't need to hear 633 right. things that are the same. Right. I want to know the seven that you were overruled on. Well, typically we add another column if they're different. Mm -hmm. Sure. So if if they happen to be, you would see the town administrator's budget, the board of selectmen's budget. But I like the verbal yeah. presentation as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, okay. I, I'm hoping we minimize those. Two right. Pieces. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. And then on the tenth, we basically either come up with, if you will, a third. Mm -hmm set of numbers or adopt the second or some of the changes from the first. Okay. I'm getting it. It's only going to take me 15, 20 years. That's good. I, yeah. That's why you have to stay on the, on the finance committee. Well, <laughs> you know, the quorum issue alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. Hey, good morning. Oh, yeah. I have to do my Chapter 44 notice to you. That the snow and ice budget was increased to uh -huh. three hundred thousand. Two hundred. Three hundred. 
Oh, t three. So my three prior hundred. notice to you was it went from 155 to 225, sure. and then once we got to 225, we got 16 inches of snow. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. right. right. <laughs> so That's we are point. not at 300 right now, but yeah. we set it at 300 to give John some room to clean up some bills. Um, I'll ask Mathis and not Gene. What have we been ballpark averaging for final expenditure the last three or four years? The last three above or four Above the years? three or below the three? A little bit above the three. Yeah, okay. 350, 360. Okay, yeah, right. We only try to budget two next year, which is still an improvement. Sure. We're sure. still trying to get right. to, to the top. But nothing else coming in, we're not at a bad number. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see, old business, new business. Do you have some old business? I do. I do. If you look at the minutes of the Finance Committee meeting Tuesday, January 22nd, uh, under the Town Administrator's reports, um, I have in the minutes here that budget books will be available at the beginning of February. Um, we have not received budget books this year. This has been our standard way of operating. I stopped by a week ago, a couple weeks ago, to talk to Mr. Wojcik about budget books. It doesn't appear to me, and he's sitting here, I'll just say, he doesn't appear to me that Matt is either familiar or comfortable with the pr process that we've been using. That's just how I see it. Um, I'm not quite sure how the Finance Committee is going to continue doing their job without receiving budget books. Um, I, I told him that, you know, in, in the past, uh, requests were, had gone out to department heads for their anticipated yearly budget, and that those would go back to the administrative office, and that that would be compiled into a, into a booklet. So the Finance Committee knows what the departments are looking for. I mean, before tonight's meeting and before a couple of meetings, we, have, we, we don't have a medical. Is the budget book basically the compilation of all these sheets that we've been given? It, it from is essentially only in a, actually it was a different format. Uh, what format did, it was the Munis format, wasn't it, that we used to use, Jean? Right, yeah. yeah. How many, can, can you tell me about how many pages th that com was comprised of, do you know? Well, it's separated by department, so each sure. department had its own sheet. S so, but, but, so there's how, how many departments, just off the top of well, your head? Well, any, any, any listed here. Sure. Yeah. So these are your departments. Yeah. Is it something that can be delivered in an email format these days? I, to be honest with you, Howard, I think that it's way too late this year. I think we get really, really wrapped up and, and crazy. My question was only is it something that could be delivered in an email format? The proposed The budgets. information, as Lynn said, mm. the summaries mm -hmm. of what we've seen. This is, this is really the that Boiling seems to be. That's it. the budget the, book. The budget book is is really what Matt provides, what we provide here. Mm -hmm. right. Is the is accounts right. with the five year projection. Right. 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 So I cannot do this in Munis. No. Going out five years. So, so this is really what you're getting on a by department is what would be in the budget book. So, Pam, are you looking for something from today forward to have on April two, or you wish you would add it? Yeah. Piece by piece, heading in. So for next year. I'm telling the Finance yeah. Committee that, that the past two years mm -hmm. uh, have not, ha we've not had a budget process that I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I am not comfortable that the Finance Committee has had a good review of each department's budgets. I'm also not comfortable that the departments are not feeling integrated into the, f into the Finance Committee budget process. They would like to explain their budgets to people. Um, and I'll ask Jean or Matt, ha have you talked to the, all of the individual departments? I have. I, I'm afraid you might be the voice of one crying in the wilderness on this one. This budget is a budget for five years. And contrary <coughs> to the representation, if you look at these numbers, they don't move. So you're asking staff to pull together great big piles of paper, to what end? To show you this. It, it, so I, I, my problem here is that, look, this is a format. This is a professional 
format. This is the budget for all of these departments for next year, and the year after, and the year after, with five years of history, which you can't get on a Munis page. So you're, you're stumbling over what it looks like, Madam Chair, and not looking at the numbers, because the numbers tell the story, not the book. So, you know, I have a okay, limited amount of time to do this, and unlike my predecessor, who had time to do budget books, I am trying to save the town hundreds of thousands of dollars. And to do that, I can't be messing around with busy projects. This is the budget. This is what it looks like. I could email it to you in a heartbeat. I showed you the tool last year. We put it up on the screen. It is a powerful financial model that you can run scenarios on. You can change the numbers yourself to see what if would happen if you did certain things. That is where the world is now. That is how we do budgets now. And however you did it all, all those years in the past, it got you a town that had almost no money. You couldn't get an override passed. And you didn't have a plan for one if you did get it passed, except to send it all to the school department. What so, we're doing so here is yeah. demonstrating how you pivot. OK? And over five years, begin to make decisions now that put you in a position where you don't utilize free cash mm -hmm. for operations mm -hmm. and buy capital and not abandon your service mission to the people of the town. But you do that by linearly moving across a page where you can see what's going to change and what's not going to change. In terms of disclosure, you know, we've got fiscal notes, we've got this, you know, we spent the last several days scrubbing all of these compensation lines to the point where we're arguing about pennies mm -hmm. in order to be accurate. <laughs> I <laughs> we understand. Nothing to do with it. Right. We weren't arguing, but it was a long conversation about yeah. how you do this properly so that your estimates are rigorous. The quality of the effort is what matters, and form over substance will never win the day with me because, you know, there's no lack of transparency. You can see where all the decisions are being made here. Okay, if I may. I am a big fan of decorum, and so I would ask the administrator to maintain the decorum and the respect to the chair. You may disagree, but at least show the chair the respect. With regard to the chair, you've got an answer. I do. Okay, and it may be that it's not the answer you like. Are you satisfied that you've raised the issue in a public forum as best you can at the time? I am only the chair of this committee. Mm -hmm. This committee is run by the, by the, by the members. The, I have two new members, I have two old members. Thank you. A and Experienced. Right. Right. Experienced, right. there we go. Well used. Yeah. And <laughs> Howard? Um, I am not jumping in to support the request for the budget. That's fine. Okay. Uh, a month ago, you said to me, I don't know why they hate, why you have a finance committee when I, we don't do anything. That's a different conversation. Well, that's a it, complete it different felt to me, I, I took that in and said, we don't, we're not, we don't have, we're not, we've like not become part of the budget process. We're, we're, we're being excluded from the budget process because we're not receiving the requests from the, from the departments. And now I, I understand that I don't think the departments are actually giving requests. What, you're, what, what I believe is happening is that you're multiplying out a 2% on the expenses or whatever and a certain amount via the COLA and steps, et cetera, for the uh, salaries. Now, in, in my, what I'm thinking is that the department heads themselves lose some connection to ownership of their own budget by not participating more. With all due respect, yeah? nothing could be further from the truth. Okay. Because let's look at the requests that have been made and that are in the budget already. The police department increasing a staff member, mm -hmm. accelerating the purchase of a cruiser, mm -hmm. 
what they don't own, what none of us own, is the compensation budget. Folks, it's on autopilot. Yeah. I'm on the payroll, yeah. so I'm going to earn a step if I'm eligible for one, and a COLA. Right. So if you remember, Pam, I, I don't mean to come across as disrespectful, so if I have, please forgive me, because it's not my intent. It's, it's late. I've been working hard on this. I wanted to start off with a revenue figure, back out what we thought we needed for capital, and then do personnel. What was left after personnel was an expense allocation, and I give that to the department head and say, you own it. You, you can tell me how much you want to spend on this, this, and this item, but Madam Chair, if you look at the annual report, so the report that Suzanne produces, mm -hmm. and you go to Jean's report, and you go to the detailed budget, you'll see all the accounts, they don't spend what they put in the budget. Mm -hmm. In fact, the budget is just an estimate. They always hit the bottom line. I don't think you've ever had anybody go beyond their bottom line for their expense budget. It's illegal. It's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. So, right, but they have ownership of it, but you can yeah. see that during the year they had different things they had to accommodate. Mm -hmm. I had to buy this, so I couldn't right. buy that. Right. And at the end of the year, when Gene puts that report into the annual report, you can see now how it actually all came out. And that is some of what is reflected in these columns to the left-hand side of these spreadsheets that I produce. I, I print them one department at a time for yep. you. But you'll see the variations. And what you're going to see over here is really last year, me working with the department heads to stop the, just carry forward the number we had last year and it'll all work out in the end, but actually score, well, if we're not spending any money out of this, but we're yep. definitely spending it up here. Put it up there so that the budget sure. is cleaner. I thought that worked out pretty well. We may not have as many variances. This is the first year. We won't know until Gene closes books in 2019 whether that exercise was successful or not. Yeah. But that was the goal of it. But their relation, the department head's relationship with me is that they, ask, they own their departments. If they need something, they need to ask for it. But this is not a business where I'm going to, you know, to draw it out of them. I mean, if they... They have to feel like they need it enough to ask for it, knowing what the budget situation of the town and where their resources are allocated. When you look at it, when you come right down to it, when you take the debt out, you take the insurances out, the things that people can't control, and then you take out the, the salaries. Look at these expense lines for these guys. I know, there's nothing You there. know, the assessor is 36000 That's one of the more expensive departments. Kent is running a fire department on hundred thousand dollars so there's just not a whole heck of a lot of there there and I think that's what what, what it I was a about, lot less 10 15 years ago man I know but what, when I think about leveraging your time as a group of leaders in the community I'd like the conversation to be more about the high level how are we gonna all work together to move this thing in a direction where it's sustainable for the taxpayer I've not, seen, less, I've not had anybody bring that up. <laughs> and less time, because I think, unfortunately, that's the problem with the budget book. That, that's that's my, why it sticks in my craw, is because that becomes the object. We produced this thing, so now we should use it, right? So now we're going to go through it page by page and let the department head, you know, sort of advocate for this small program over that small program or explain service contracts or other things that they have in their budget. That's all fair, and you can inquire about well, those we have, things. I have three new members now. Three I brand know. new members on the Finance Committee. How are they going to understand the departments, what they do, what, what they want to do, by, what they by couldn't asking. do? But they come in before us. The, but, but we don't know what they want until they come in. So before, I think I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, time, but that's all. Could, how I, is could that I let change? a couple of new members speak? So on my side, we have a share drive. If there's a place where um, we could do it, and it, maybe you have to password protect it, the yeah. finance committee. But once you get everything all together, that might be a happy meeting between the two. Yeah. Is we see it all there. We can go and look. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're going to get when this is done. Mm -hmm. I don't. Well, I can share this but at any it's, time. It's, it's so I did like, last year. It's like I guess all of these right. sheets. Right. Yeah. We're killing a plethora of trees. Oh, I know. So I mean. But if it was out there on a share drive for the finance committee mm -hmm. to be able to go mm -hmm. forth, it may be a happy meeting versus having these budget books. I've never seen what budget books look like. I can kind of 
Imagine I mean, you, you know, a big mm-hmm. budget book, yeah. this thick. I work with the federal know, government. I'm used okay, to big budget Okay, you know books. about those. So, <laughs> but I think it's trying to find that happy medium to satisfy both sides. Because Lord knows, you have, mm-hmm. we're, we're a small town, you don't have an admin to just run off. Right. Places. So, maybe that's a happy medium where we create a website just so we can have you can see what they're going to request. I don't get it like 15 minutes before I'm coming into a meeting. Right. Going, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. I get the budget process. I understand it. I understand the services and stuff like that. I get that. I can't speak for the rest of the members here that are new. But I get it. Like, sh- her focus is health insurance. Got it. So maybe that's the happy meeting we need to take. Can we have department heads come in? more than just yep. once a year to yep. talk to us about things? Yep. Or is it only really pertinent to have them come in when nope. they want to ask for something for their passing their budget? Well, the this year? is the other part of this. Um, it's hard to meet in the summer, mm-hmm. but when we get into the fall, really a lot of what we're talking about now we should be talking about in October, mm-hmm. November, right. and that's really that should be budget time. Because mm-hmm. when we start to get it seems like no matter what we do, we've got a million and one things going on the warrant besides this. Mm-hmm. So there's zoning requests, there's eminent domain, there's bylaw changes, there's other things that people want to put on the warrant. That takes time too. Mm-hmm. So if we did some of this earlier, I know capital really should be meeting in the fall. They should be meeting year round because they need to be updated on how we're doing with procuring the projects, how the money's being spent, mm-hmm. that it was approved, and what what might be changing for next year? Where are the grant opportunities? So yes, we should start our work a lot earlier and then uh, take the holidays off. And then by the time we get to this time of year, this is all, all finalized. Well, this is very right? late, yeah. We just it is very late. But now Jean will say, and I, th- I put words in Jean's mouth, yeah. but, but she'll be the one who reminds us of the realities. We don't get the health insurance renewal yeah. well, until that's... January. Uh, just today, I'm still interacting with Maya to give me an estimate of property casualty. That's a really big account. Mm, yeah. So he came back with a, well, if I had to guess, I'd say take a 10% increase because oh. your 156% claims over premium, so you're probably looking at a big one. Okay, well, that's a little bit of guidance. It's better than I already had a bad scenario in there. I made it worse and still came up with this number. The I go back to the point I tried to make earlier, which is the Finance Committee has the power to inquire into the operations. So it's not just hearing how the budget works, it's a, an oversight function for town meeting. Now, you, know, you live by the sword, die by the sword, but I think there are some people who should be called in and, and made to, to rant and rave at the level of detail I can rant and rave and Gene can rant and rave about our municipal side budget. Because <coughs> I could, if I had to, produce for you right now a very detailed personnel supplement, which is my intention, which I've been trying to build. But you can see what every single employee will earn for the next five years, provided they stay with us, mm-hmm. and depending on what COLA we design. Mm-hmm. I need that because I can't negotiate with employees in an intelligent manner until mm-hmm. that spreadsheet is in my hand. Mm-hmm. So I think the school department should be helped with that same task. And you have the power to ask for it. You're the only body in town that has the power to ask for that. The, the selectmen have no business at and I, I don't either. But you can say, steps and lanes, what's that about? <coughs> what, what, how does forecast. that play out over a forecast for the next three years? What does that mean for the rest of what we're trying to do? That takes, so elevating the game a little bit, and also I think where I feel like I need a partner from finance committee, the finance committee to be a partner is how we're going to structure all these things. Where are going to be the sources of funds for various capital initiatives or other initiatives that we're trying to to set forth? You know, do we, do we want a special article for this or for that? Or <coughs> getting above and beyond the day-to-day, because the day-to-day we kind of handle. That, that's what we were hired to do. And it's kind of a pain in the neck to keep track of what we do. It's more, I think it's more engaging to look at the overall trend of the town and say, well, how does town meeting get the information it needs to help 
the administration and the Board of Selectmen get to the point we need to get to, which is stability across our accounts, more than anything else. And we're, we'll be soon be at a decision point, I'm sure. How much money do we think we want to ask town meeting for to support economic development? What is the value of that development? How is it going to generate revenues for the town? So how much do we want to put on the table? That's a huge decision. I would rather spend weeks talking about that. Mm -hmm. And we never and talk about that anymore. Yeah, and so that's that's kind of, so you can see where I'm coming from. That's why I get a little frustrated with the conversation. I don't express myself as well as I could, but that's why I think we need to get to, it doesn't matter how what how big the town is, it really doesn't. It doesn't matter if you're 100,000 or 10,000 or 5,000. That strategy, that building towards what you're trying to get to is what keeps the community together. Pam, would it be useful to you if we had more meetings in the fall, right? Where we, I wouldn't kill it. No, Because like no. you said, we have trouble getting a quorum of five. You That's can't have right. many, mm -hmm. but you could probably do one or two. I wouldn't mind from what you just said, the concept of an October meeting with the town administrator to have and hear the town administrator's macro ideas of what he's looking for, both from the budget process in the following four or five months and from the finance committee with regard to that process, right? You're saying you can use things from the finance committee. And then a meeting a week or two weeks later, sounds like with school committee, because frankly, that's one of the biggest drivers in the budget to drill down a little more than a meeting last week where it's one part of three yeah. uh, and you've got a lot of ground to cover and can't possibly drill very far down in that amount of time. That your makes me two in the morning. Mm, because it seems <coughs> like, I mean, I'm new to this, so everything is being crammed in and I'm going, is this right. the way it always is? Yeah. It is. You know, I mean, well, it is the well with the regard to the budget, it is. <laughs> let me, I mean, this is probably an ignorant question, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. Who sets the schedule of when town meeting is? Can it be? No. Yeah. Well, we, we do have two town meetings. We have one the first Monday of May, and then we mm -hmm. have one in the fall. So right. there's two. We can't town meetings. push it no. to like November and well, June. Well, one. In, no. You know, like no matter where you put it, you end up in the same situation. Yeah. Well, I just figured if the if the renewals for the biggest piece of the budget, That's which is tough. the insurance, doesn't come out until the beginning of the year. Well, the cherry yeah. sheet doesn't come out until July. I mean, there's there's so many pieces yeah. that, that okay. which is why we use the November town meeting as we use a lot of assumptions yeah. sometimes. But if we, we kept forward. the same mm -hmm. hearing dates, mm -hmm. we could probably have a couple of useful, oh. and and I don't need I don't need micro. In those meetings, I need macro mm -hmm. to understand what's going to be anticipated for a couple of months later. But there's no macro. Yeah, we well never have macro discussions. What we do have in the fall, in terms of macro, but by October we have enrollment figures for BBT yeah. and Norfolk. Yep. And choice in, choice out for our own. Yep. Um, and we can start to craft budget instructions on a general, in a general sense. But my hope, my thought process is that. I went through all the effort to get the personnel budget reduced to the level that I got it at, so that it won't be a, I won't have to do it again. Right. I'm, if, as we hire a new employee, I'm going to enter that person's data, their step and grade, and their date of hire, and I'm going to be done. The, 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 the model's going to spit it out, I'm not going to think about it anymore. That's going to also change the way I operate. See, last year, we were rushed, but we were rushed because there was an override discussion, yeah. Yeah. and we needed to be able to show people what the impact would be. And so the personnel budget got, it wasn't formally reduced to something that was so flexible that I could add to it later. It was just, it captured the people we had and what they were paid. And it was, it sufficed for the job, but it didn't capture the nuances uh, that actually have pretty big impact on the budget. If I could let the finance committee know the new members in particular, in the finance handbook, it does say that you finance members can stop by and talk to department heads, give them a call, mm -hmm. send them an email, and ask them if you could stop by and talk to them about their budget or about their operations, what they're doing. You may do that any time during the year, Saturday, Sunday, school day. <laughs> they just always have to remember, I think it's helpful to remember that you are basically a subcommittee of the legislature. Yeah, the the, right. Of the true power of the town. So you can you have free reign to do those things. And, and you want to find out You have out free things. reign to come in and ask, can I see your 
printout for this such and such a budget today. Where's yeah. that? Because I'm curious about it. Mm -hmm. And I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll do it because <laughs> without town meeting, I can't do anything. I mean, um, when we, we have, have when we have a, a reserve fund request, uh, we can ask the accountant to uh, spit out a couple of spreadsheets and show us what everything was spent for on snow and ice, so we know where snow and ice money is going. Mm -hmm. I think, with all respect to Pam's characterization earlier of my comments with regard to what the Finance Committee does or can do or mm -hmm. anything like that. My concern is, as you've seen, Gene, over the last three or four years, is let's take the school budget as an example. I consistently have a perception that while I might be able to recommend a global number, I've never been allowed to have any say as to what that number is spent on. Correct? No, the school well, no. department is voted as one line. Right. And the school committee. Oh, but who's here? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, has the and, and so the inquire. authority, I yes, can inquire can all yes. I want, yes. but I also can hit my head against the wall, too, and I'm not sure which one's more fun. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> definitely I hitting your head well, against it's the wall. Close. <laughs> First so, of all, I don't know what the experience is like hitting your head on the wall. I mean, I, <laughs> it, those documents are public documents, and yeah. if you need something yeah. explained that appears in a public document, you have every right to ask. And I, and I think but you that's have not more right issue. to ask than we do. I can inquire all I want, can't change but it. on this committee, I can't change anything except what I propose as a final number. And if I propose a final number that gets approved, they'll still spend it consistent with how they wanted to spend it. That's true. But that bottom line number is still where you have and, and that's a considerable yeah. amount of say so. But that's part of that's Only part of the, to the school law. My my warrant vote gets approved over this board of selectmen. Well, that's what you remember. You come in at the end, so I think if you went on a you know, if you had a specific thing that you were trying to accomplish that may have been swimming against the tide just a little bit. And even the Board of Selectmen doesn't support it, so it's not yep. a warrant. Yep. But as a member of FinCom, you can stand up and say to town meeting mm -hmm. and the moderator who appointed you and say, look, this I did a study. I'm curious about this. I got stonewalled here, stonewalled here, frustrated here, and now I'm yeah. here to say I don't want to support yeah. this bottom line. I want to take 30 grand out of it mm -hmm. because I think there's 30 grand too rich. And you... But you've, you got to win, you've got to win that vote once at town meeting yep. to have the leverage the next year to have school committee listen to you to say, oh, maybe we should allocate things marginally differently on a couple of line items. And at the moment, I haven't seen us go to town meeting with any difference with regard to the uh, Board of Selectmen warrants where we've won anything. And, and I don't mean won. But I mean where you've offered a change that's gotten adopted. Because look, with all respect to what we do, when you have five people up on a podium on the stage, and they're the board and they appear to be the establishment, you have a bunch of people sitting in little seats and they stand up for a minute. Well, for the most part, who are you? Uh, well, for the most <laughs> part, people vote and they're going to listen. They, they, people are going to say yes. That sounds right because that's the way it was proposed. Well, sometimes they those have people spent more time boards on. on the stage. You know, they would have the board of selectmen and the finance. Have both boards on stage. Yeah. I, you know, it kind of depends on what you want to ask for and what your moderator is willing to give you. Because he's ultimately going to control sure. the. But, in all honesty, why would it be outrageous to suggest that FinCom actually get the floor to not only present a, a flyer, but the top three or four major points that FinCom has voted that it wants the people to know about? Yep, absolutely possible. Yes, you could do that, but there are still issues associated with that, which I'm not prepared to go into this evening. But I think this committee last year was instrumental in voting down the BVT budget. To what end? <laughs> you know, I, well, I don't in, know. in, in a democracy, the, yeah. the stands you take Fair. Over I time, agree with that. And, and I will tell you that the superintendent sat with me and had a very intelligent conversation about health insurance. And he prefaced his comments. This was before he came in here to address you. He said, I heard the message loud and clear when the seven town managers that oh. met with me in Upton that day read me the riot act about health insurance. So I went out and I shopped it and I got a zero. 
That's huge. Yep. Yeah. So he, no matter what anybody wants to say about the superintendent, one, he's successful, and two, he does listen. Yeah, it's hard to argue with either he, of those he qualities. He, li he <laughs> listens to numbers. He listens to numbers. The numbers get in the way of what he's trying to do. That's the message we all want to send to everybody who's involved in public education, is what you spend over here right. could have been used over here if you had managed it differently. Yeah. So please just hear us out and try it. And I think he did that, and I think he's in a pretty good position. He was able to come back to us with what? Globally, a three and a half to overall. So so we were, our so number was driven by enrollment still yeah. yes. to get to six and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're even miss, though miss, has he, missing our points a little bit, but I understand. Yeah. That that wasn't when I said to what end. That actually, I agree. There is mm -hmm. progress in many regards. Mm -hmm. Not in other areas. Sorry, that's, right. that's right. Yeah, that's cool. right. Yeah. Good. Are we good? I don't, I'm good. If I make a motion to adjourn, you know why, is uh, is Brett here is for? Brett here to see would like, or would say. Like to Present. We've got a couple okay. hours <laughs> if you want to come up. Wait a minute. Let I have me check. I might be at the very bottom. Unanticipated discussion with the school committee chairman. Do you really? Happy to discuss anything you want. Bill, did you want to come up and say something? No, no. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, I'm glad All right. I, I can spend an hour yes. tonight listening to you guys. That's nope. an hour tomorrow. I don't I won't Thank be watching you. Yeah, right. That's, <laughs> right. That's, right. That's right. That's right. I had the time this evening. Okay, so. did you Thank make you. a motion? I did make a motion <laughs> to adjourn. Did you make a second? Do you want to? Okay. Yes. Yes. And then I will not be here on April 2nd. Yes. I will be away on a business meeting. So and you would uh, told us that. Just to make sure everybody knows. Yeah. Thank, for mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yes. I hope so we're back here next forum. Tuesday, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. We're here. We are. Yeah. We are. Be here right. or be square. <laughs> yeah. yep. Or both. Thanks, Keith. Thank Did we get that seconded and voted to adjourn? All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Aye.